Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rux, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer and today we're going to be talking about your December horoscope folks and uh, how is it December already? How is it? I've got no idea. So the last month of the year of 2023 is, is actually a month packed with action. It's it's bringing some much needed spark, spontaneity. Um, it's bringing a much needed dose of inspiration and faith, if you if you ask me. There's a lot of energy um, concentrated in Sagittarius. Obviously, it is Sagittarius season. Uh, the sun transits uh, Sagittarius until the 22nd of, of, of December. Um, as opposed to November, when we had very, 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 very little fire in the sky, we've got quite a bit of fire in the sky this uh, this month. So there's kind of like a change in in, in the vibe over uh, overall. Um, there's a sense of the mood being uplifted, I'd, uh, I'd say. Mars is going to be in Sagittarius the entire month, so we might feel very energized and inspired to defend our beliefs, to defend what we... What we uh, what we stand for to defend our philosophies, to um, defend what we consider to be morally right, I'd, uh, I'd say. It can also be a month of excess, especially in terms of pleasure and consumption. We're going to get to that. Um, quite a bit of back and forth, so we are probably going to revisit some old some old issues. Uh, why? Mercury is going to go retrograde. Mercury is going to go retrograde on uh, the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. From the 13th until the 23rd, is, it's going to be retrograde in Sagittarius, and then it's going to be retrograde in Capricorn. <clears throat> we do have some happy endings. I am really, really looking forward to um, the last full moon of the year, the full moon in Cancer. It is an absolutely superb full moon, forming really harmonious aspects with both Jupiter and Saturn. So it can feel like a time of, of our mood being uplifted. It can feel like a time of, of somewhat somewhat of a happy end connected with, with home life, family life. Um, there can be really uh, auspicious uh, or um, optimistic, um, let's say, news or views when it comes to Cancerian matters. So homes, families, um, history, um, land, um, and, and I'm, I'm talking here especially about the emotional connection that we have with, with land and with our uh, home countries in, um, in general. There could also be a strong sense of connection that we feel with, with our family, our tribe, our people, um, and our roots at the time of the full moon, um, which is happening, by the way, 27th of December, in case anyone is, is, is wondering. It's also going to be active three days before, three days after. And I do recommend looking back at the new moon um, that happened in Cancer earlier this year on the 17th of July, because we could see some really positive completions of a matter that was on our radars um, beginning of, uh, well, middle of, middle of July. Uh, so earlier this, this year, approximately six months, uh, six months earlier. I'm going to walk you through some of the most important dates and transits. I've, I've already started doing that. I know I, I, I have this tendency to jump uh, right in, but before we do that, I do want to flag a few things. The first one being that uh, I'm a Western tropical astrologer, therefore all the content on my uh, on my channel and on my podcast uh, follows Western tropical astrology. The other very important thing um, is that in my practice, I use the whole sign house system. I know some of you use Placidus, equal houses, whatever you prefer to use, that is completely up to you. But for these general horoscopes, because obviously there's going to be updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs, I use the whole sign um, house system. So if I, um, I don't know, I'm going to give you an example. If I say, okay, Cancer Risings, Mars is going to be transiting Sagittarius in your house of day-to-day -day work, and you're telling me, no, 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 Sagittarius is in my fifth house, then you're probably using a different house system, which is totally up to you. But for when it comes to general horoscopes like this, um, that we're going to cover um, a little bit later, my recommendation is to follow whole sign houses. But again, you have free will, and uh, that is totally, totally on uh, on you what you uh, what you decide to do. But just in case you're looking at your chart and you're wondering, hmm, why is this? What 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 is going on? What is what is Rux talking about? Speaking of free will, 
so um, I, I, I know that I've mentioned this in the past, but I do imagine there could be some people here for the very, very first uh, time. Astrology is a symbolic and archetypal language. Astrology is not clairvoyance. It does not predict exact material manifestation. I always offer um, examples and scenarios in my forecasts. But please do not get hung up on the concrete details and descriptions that I offer in these uh, in these general horoscopes, um, because I'm giving examples so that you can take away the the, the information and the material, uh, but the energies um, from a symbolic perspective can express themselves in a variety of ways. So let me give you the example of Mars and Sagittarius. Mars transiting Sagittarius for, for all of us can mean, um, because this is, this is happening this month, it can mean defending our beliefs, but it can also mean fighting abroad or fighting with foreigners. So uh, the symbolism can, can manifest itself in a variety of ways, which is why astrology does not predict concrete material manifestation. Also, uh, sometimes people have um, maybe the expectation that general forecasts such as this one uh, are going to uh, cover exactly and precisely uh, their life to, to, to a T, um, or they will be aligned somehow to um, what is going on um, in their lives right now entirely. And whilst that is a great ideal to aspire to. It doesn't work like that. Why? Because the most accurate type of forecast that you can get is the one that you get from an astrologer that does work on your natal chart, on your birth chart. Uh, these general forecasts that we, myself and other astrologers do uh, on, on, on YouTube, they only take into account uh, one part of your chart, which is generally either the ascendant, the rising sign, or the sun sign. Uh, we have an entire natal chart, the map of the sky when we were born, which is uh, like, the, like the snapshot of the sky and of our soul's intentions, you could say. We have an entire natal chart that is much more complex than just our ascendant uh, or our sun sign. In my personal work, um, I am a full-time consulting astrologer. I work with clients full-time. In my personal work, I do in-depth granular forecasts based on people's natal charts. So if that is something that you are interested in, um, please reach out. You can uh, you can find me on my website, which is written in the stars-astrology.com. That is where you can purchase readings with me, one-to-one -one readings. Um, I do these via live Zoom consultation. We can also record them so that you can go back to them. And uh, we can look at the year ahead very in-depth uh, for you to understand what life chapter you're in, how you can make the most of the year ahead, how to better um, align yourselves with the energies and the um, cycles that, you, uh, that you're finding yourselves in, how to best navigate the, um, the energies at play in the cosmos, because we are all linked. I mean, we'd like to believe sometimes that we live in a vacuum and that, I don't know, whatever goes on in, in, in the world doesn't affect us, but astrology is... That's probably also why uh, you're here watching this. Uh, if you didn't believe this, uh, you probably wouldn't be here. Um, astrology is the best proof that shows us as above, so below. So we are part of the cosmos and we are like a like a smaller cosmos in, in, in and of ourselves. And the astrology, which is keeping track of planetary cycles, um, of of interactions between uh, cosmic energies. Um, the astrology can help us understand through correspondence what sort of life cycle we are in or life cycles we are in, uh, where in our life we are encouraged or supported by the cosmos, by the cosmic tides to grow, to um, expand, to uh, take chances, to stretch ourselves, where in our lives we are supported by the cosmos to... to um, scale down, to scale back, to restructure, uh, to let go. So these are all topics that we uh, address in a one-to-one -one astrological consultation with me. Again, my website is written in the stars-astrology.com. You can go straight to the services section. If you are our, if you are a first-time client, the one hour, 15 minutes Zoom consultation is for you. Um, that is 
the option that is the service to go for, um, regardless of the topics that you would like us to address. So if you want to talk about the year ahead and you're a first time client and you want to get an in-depth granular forecast, um, go for that option, the one hour, 15 minute Zoom consultation. If you're a first time client and you would like me to interpret your natal chart, the natal chart is the root prediction. The natal chart helps us understand our soul's intentions, what lessons we're here to learn, um, what challenges we're here to deal with in this lifetime, how to best navigate them, what works in our favor, what innate talents we've got, what resources we've got, what we can take advantage of. Uh, these are all responses that come from the natal chart, how you can make the most of um, the cards that you have been dealt, so to speak, from a professional perspective, from a relationship perspective, from a financial perspective. Again, these are all areas that we can address in a natal chart uh, reading. So if you're a first time client and you haven't had your natal chart read, we can do that in the one hour, 15 minute Zoom consultation. If you have had that uh, done for you in the past, we can dive into the year ahead or we can look into compatibility with someone else, with a partner. We do need uh, their permission for, for, that, to, uh, for that to happen. Um, we can also look at your astral cartography, so how certain places around the world um, activate your natal chart. Let's say you want to travel somewhere or you want to relocate. It is generally very useful to know how that part of the world is going to um, trigger your, uh, your natal chart. So all of these are areas that we can cover during the one hour 15 or in a one hour 15 minute Zoom consultation. Not all at once because obviously the time is limited, but you can choose from these. If you're an existing client, there are two additional options you can go for. The one hour year ahead forecast, which does what it says on the tin, and the 30 minutes um, follow up. If you have some very kind of like specific questions following on from like a prior um, consultation, uh, if you want to, let's say, uh, dive deeper into a certain topic, such as career and vocation, we can also do that during the 30 minutes follow up. So written in the stars dash astrology.com. That is my website. Please go to the services section and that's where you can purchase. That's the only place where you can purchase readings from, from me, which are Zoom uh, live video consultations that we can record so that you can re-listen. My website is also the place where you can purchase courses. The three uh, courses that are on my website are for intermediate astrology uh, students, the natal chart interpretation masterclass, Forecasting with Transits and the Saturn Transits Masterclass. I repeat, they are for intermediate students, not for beginners. Intermediate means that you have at least uh, like a working kind of like, um, like a good understanding of um, what the houses are, the planets, uh, the signs, what, what they mean, um, and so and so on. Going back to where I kind of like started this all off uh, from, um, Please, please, please do not expect general forecasts to be as accurate and as granular as personal forecasts based on your natal chart. That is the that is the gist of it. And also, when you listen to the update for your um, for your own sign, please, please, please listen to the update for your rising sign because I build these horoscopes with the rising sign in mind. If you don't know your rising sign, if you don't know your ascendant, then you can listen to your sun sign. But if you know your rising sign, please listen to the update for that one. December, most important astrological events. So I've mentioned the full moon at the end of the month, Mercury retrograde, what else is going on? Um, first of December, Mercury goes into uh, Capricorn. So our mind is likely to be a lot more focused on facts, facts, uh, concrete uh, aspects of, of, of life. And and um, Capricorn kind of like focuses our our intellectual attention on, on what is kind of like tangible and, and concrete. 2nd of December, Mercury sextile Saturn, really good day to do hard work using your mind. Um, 3rd of December, Venus in Libra squares Pluto, secrets coming to the surface in relationships that could, um, yeah, threaten a little bit the level of trust in, in, in relationships. 4th of December, all the way until the 29th, Venus transits Scorpio, um, our love language and, and our relationships are likely to become a lot more kind of like deep, intense, and and maybe even taken a little bit to the extreme in terms of like emotional uh, attachment. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn, a really good day to, um, to get in place a business collaboration, a professional collaboration, and to consolidate relationships of all kinds. 
Neptune goes direct on the 6th of December in uh, in Pisces, and on the 8th, Mercury trines Jupiter. Mercury in Capricorn trines Jupiter in Taurus. A day of very, very productive talks, of very um, productive conversations about the future, about growth. Um, a day in which I would recommend booking trips, booking um, and, and kind of like making the plan for or the itinerary for, for, for traveling, but maybe also making a plan when it comes to your uh, education. A day of excess, Venus uh, in opposition to Jupiter on the 10th of December. So overdoing it with the partying, the entertainment and so on. 11th of December, Mercury sextiles Venus. So some, some really kind of like uh, enjoyable conversations with, with a loved one. 12th of December, we've got a new one in Sagittarius. Um, new beginning when it comes to Sagittarian matters. So it could be traveling, it could be education, it could be philosophy, religion, spirituality. But the new one is squaring Neptune. So some things are unclear, some things are vague, some things are very kind of like foggy, and some things are borderline fant like from the from the realm of the fantastic, but not from the realm of the uh, realistic aspects of, 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 of life. Jupiter trines Mercury, so I do like this. I, I, I feel like it's um, it can be a, a new moon that brings good news connected with travel, transportation, and education in some sorts, uh, and uh, of, of some sorts, and good news uh, coming from like foreign lands and foreign countries. Mercury retrograde, 13th of December, kicks off. Um, 18th of December, Mercury retrograde trines Jupiter again. A uh, good time to maybe pick back up where you left off um, conversations uh, about money, about career. 21st of December, Venus opposes Uranus. Some relationships could break or, or fall apart around this uh, around this time. Um, 22nd of December, Capricorn season starts and we've got a Mercury Kazemi. So clarity of mind. Venus trines Neptune on the 25th of December. So um, I, I'd say that Christmas is likely to be extra romantic and relaxing. <laughs> um, and 27th of December, the full moon in Cancer that I told you I really, really love. Uh, my least favorite day of the of the uh, month is the 28th of December. Uh, Mercury conjuncts Mars. Um, so people could be very quick to say something or to speak or to kind of like jump to conclusions or to kind of like be aggressive with words and uh, they could really end up hurting others um, and maybe kind of uh, hurting others also because they're saying things with confidence because Sagittarius can be very impassioned and confident um, but they don't have the full picture and they're not actually very clear on the, the the facts and the numbers and the data and it might be very destructive overall so careful who you who you uh, enter into an argument with because it might not be worth it there could also be all sorts of disruption on the road on the 20th of December and generally massive disruption connected with traveling. So if you can avoid traveling on the 28th, I would I would recommend doing uh, doing so. Um, Venus goes into Sagittarius 29th of December until the 23rd of January. Uh, all of you who have Sagittarius planets, placements, angles in the chart, you're going to enjoy this tremendously, tremendously. And Jupiter goes direct in Taurus on the 31st of December, um, folks. So like starting to grow, starting to build again um, and, and continuing the expansion on, on the Taurian front. So when it comes to land, food, um, constructions and so uh, and so on. And of course, now we are going to go into the updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs. Now, before we do that, I repeat, please listen to the update for your rising sign. And also remember that if you want to work with me, if you want to book a personal reading, a personal consultation, my website is written in the stars astrology.com. When I'm filming this, I'm taking bookings for the second half of December. By the time I release this, I will probably be taking bookings for the latter part of, uh, of December. I generally book like a, like a month, a month and a half in, in advance. So that's generally kind of the, uh, the waiting time uh, for, for those of you who are uh, interested in, in uh, knowing the, the specifics. My dear Aries, Aries suns and Aries risings, what does the last month of 2023 have in store for you? Well, there is a lot of energy focused this month, Aries, on your travel sector, but also your career sector. Some of you might be saying, Rux, I am not planning to travel. I have no trips on my on my calendar. Well, for you folks, 
In that case, it may feel like the month is going to be revolving a lot around matters that have something to do with legal entities, legal institutions, maybe also matters that have something to do with visas, um, residencies, passports, um, maybe also university um, or academia related uh, related matters. But I am not going to get ahead of myself as I as I usually do. Let's start from the very, very, very beginning. So this entire month, Aries, Mars, which is your chart ruler, I'm especially talking to Aries risings here. Mars is going to be transiting your ninth house. What does that tell us? It it tells us that you're probably going to be putting a lot of energy and you might feel very motivated and very driven and uh, very keen to get things going when it comes to your studies. So when it comes to, for instance, completing your studies, um, completing your, your, your thesis, um, completing maybe a semester at, uh, at school, you might also be putting a lot of energy into getting things done when it comes to, as I've mentioned at the very beginning, when it comes to um, trips, travel related matters, any sort of issues that need to be solved in connection with foreign lands and foreign countries, you might also be putting a lot of energy into getting things done on the legal front. For instance, let's say you are in the process of applying for a visa or for a passport. This month, you might actually be very, very um, energized and eager to get this out of the way. The one thing, however, is that you might also be feeling a little bit, a little bit, a little bit impatient at the same time. There's also a very high chance this month that you might be a lot more assertive and you are normally very assertive and we know that because you're Aries, right? Uh, but you might be a lot more assertive and a lot more keen to stand up and to defend what it is that you believe in, to defend your life philosophy, to defend your belief system. Um, you might also uh, be a lot more pushy and direct and blunt when it comes to defending your philosophical, moral, religious, and spiritual views. Now, astrology doesn't tell us if something is good or bad. It just tells us what is. Astrology is only descriptive, right? There might be some times when you might want to potentially reconsider whether it is worth or not, whether it's worth it or not, um, being very, very, very vocal, I, uh, I want to say, about a specific set of beliefs. I am thinking in particular about the following time. I'm thinking about um, the 20th of December, maybe also the day before and the day after. This is a time when Mercury is going to conjunct Mars in your ninth house and it's going to square Neptune. What does that tell us? It tells us that you might be um, very... Um, straightforward in expressing your views um, upon a political matter. For, for instance, you might inadvertently, so obviously there's no ill intention, but you might hurt some people or you might even hurt your own relationship with co-workers, colleagues, clients, and if you employ people with your own employees. So careful because I don't believe you've got all the all the facts and you, your, your, your data and your numbers and your facts might be a little bit off, a little bit incorrect, and you might really, without trying to or without intending to, you might really, really um, hurt uh, or upset uh, someone, especially these people that I have mentioned. You might also hurt or upset people such as um, neighbors, siblings and cousins around this, um, around this time. So it's not my favorite time uh, when it comes to being very cutting with your words. Also keep in mind that Mercury is going to go retrograde. So it's going to be prime time. It's, it's, it's going to be the season for misunderstandings and for uh, maybe words and, and conversations to be, uh, to be misinterpreted, uh, to be maybe misconstrued, for messages to be misconstrued. Mercury is going to go retrograde on the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. So pretty much the whole of the, the, the entire second half of December until the beginning of next year. 
because Mercury is the ruler of your third house of communication, siblings, cousins, and also of your sixth house of, of colleagues, co-workers, people that you work with, people that you serve through your work, um, communication with these people, with these uh, types of people in particular, in particular, <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to say too many things at once. Communication with these people um, might not necessarily go exactly as planned. And I repeat, things might get lost in translation. Things uh, might be misinterpreted. Um, your words might not land exactly as you intended them to land. You might get the wrong message also. So you might take offense at something that someone says when actually they meant no offense. So I would be a little bit careful when it comes to just keep kind of like being very direct with your um with your communication style because it might backfire um in the second half of the month and i'm not saying don't call things by their name but i'm also saying don't jump to conclusions and we know that if there is one thing that can sabotage your actions, initiatives, my dear Aries in this lifetime, sometimes it is very much impulsivity. It's kind of like jumping in, throwing yourselves, uh, throwing yourselves in. So that's something that I wanted to put on your radar. With Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde is going to start um, on the 13th of December in your house of career um, until the 23rd of December. So you might expect some delays um, when it comes to your career progression, maybe when it comes to career advancement uh, during these um, these 10 days. Then from the 23rd of December until the, sec uh, the 2nd of January, Mercury retrograde goes, in goes into your ninth house of long distance travel, foreign lands, foreign countries. So from the 13th of December until the 23rd, um, you might you might want to uh, reconnect with uh, old clients, old bosses. You might want to pick back um, up where you left off. Um, maybe old outstanding conversations with, with people in positions of authority and old kind of like outstanding conversations in the career space. You might also experience, as I said, a delay in, in uh, when it comes to your career, a delay maybe when it comes to hearing back from an interview, for, for, for example. Uh, there could be uh, old clients getting back in touch with you and saying, listen, I want us to work together again, or I want another um, copy of the report that you sent me six months ago. So you might have to dig through the uh, through the archives. And then when Mercury retrograde is transiting your ninth house from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, um, if you are traveling, you might travel to places that you've been to in the past. Uh, you might also experience uh, delays or things getting a little bit um, misconstrued uh, or... or um, Things getting a little bit confusing when it comes to uh, travel matters, travel matters, legal matters, um, matters connected with academia. So if you need to submit a thesis or something like that, um, especially from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, I would uh, reach out to them, to the professor, for instance, and, and make sure that they received your email and things like uh, and things like that. And if you are traveling, especially long distance, I would... Keep in mind that Mercury is retrograde and there can be cancellations, delays. Uh, I would get travel insurance. Um, sometimes the luggage might get, I don't know, misplaced. So it's very possible, all very Mercury retrograde um, stuff, I'd, uh, I'd say. There are some good times, some good days during the Mercury retrograde. Um, I'm going to flag them to you, but... You know how I like to warn people in advance about what could go, what could be a little bit off. Mercury retrograde is never a tragedy. Don't get me wrong. So it's never something to be, to really get freaked out over, to freak out over, <laughs> but it can be sometimes quite irritating, right? So going back to the beginning of the month, 1st of December, Mercury goes into your 10th house of career um, from the 1st of December all the way until the 23rd. A lot of talks um, and a lot of your mental energy seems to be going um, into professional matters, career related matters. And also you could be, um, you could feel like there's a lot of uh, a lot of talks and a lot of conversations that are happening in the public space. Because I know that there are people who tell me, Rux, I don't care about my career. What What's going on for me with Mercury transiting my 10th house? I'm like, yeah, you're going to be out into the world talking to people. Very, very, very likely. 
2nd of December, really good day. Mercury sextiles Saturn. It feels like um, you're making very significant progress career-wise with some of the work that you've been doing behind the scenes. Um, you might also get some really difficult work done, uh, work that required a lot of mental concentration, but also work that required you getting someone on your side, you persuading uh, someone. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. Okay, here is where you might be a little bit surprised by uh, the reaction or maybe um, something that comes to the surface um, when it comes to a business partnership or a business relationship. Uh, you might find out something about a business partner that uh, determines you to reconsider potentially your entire collaboration. Um, your own life partner, for those of you who are in a relationship, uh, your own life partner might reveal something to you or you might find something um, about them that kind of like challenges a little bit the relationship because y you might be wondering, okay, so if you didn't tell me this up until this point, how can I trust you or are you hiding or are you keeping secret any other things from me? The other possibility around the 3rd of December is that potentially if you've got a partner, uh, they might have a little bit of trouble maybe with one of their parents. They could find out something quite uh, disturbing that has been happening under the surface. So that's a possibility. 4th of December until the 29th of December, Venus goes into Scorpio in your eighth house. Now, generally, this is considered to be a good time to receive gifts and to also offer uh, gifts, a very enjoyable time when it comes to intimacy. Uh, you might get some good results when it comes to investments for those of you who have um, investments. Generally, um, Venus transiting the eighth house might make it a lot more enjoyable to address matters that would otherwise be like a, like a taboo topic or a topic that generates kind of like emotional anxiety. So it might feel easier to deal with these types of issues, especially in conjunction or in collaboration with someone else. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn. I really, really like this because this is when you might feel very appreciated by a boss um, or someone in a position of power, an authority figure. Um, it might also feel like you have overcome together with a partner something that constituted a source of emotional anxiety for both of you or for either of you. Uh, this could also be a time when it feels like your partner's finances are getting consolidated in some shape or form. Maybe you hear about your partner getting a raise and that might uh, lift off, I don't know, like a, a pressure off of your uh, off of your shoulders. It feels like together with a partner, um, for those of you who have partners in particular, um, you are maybe agreeing on a long-term goal when it comes to removing something out of your lives. Those of you who are not in a relationship, I do, uh, I, I would um, kind of like draw your attention to business partnerships in particular. It feels like you are agreeing maybe with someone who you're collaborating on the professional side on some sort of like new system or new way of working or a better and improved way of working that makes everyone's lives easier and saves time, I'd, um, I'd say. 8th of December, one of my favorite days, Mercury trines Jupiter in your second house. Uh, very, very uh, exciting conversations happening in the professional space, maybe exciting conversations happening about a raise. Uh, this might actually be a really good time to ask for a raise or to communicate, if you're working for yourselves, my dear Aries, to communicate that you're putting your prices up, I'd, uh, I'd say. In any case, whatever is being discussed around this time seems to make you feel very appreciated uh, for, your, for your talents, for your skills, and it seems to be... It can be kind of like a, a conversation or a set of conversations that are likely to lead to you maybe being much better off and in a much kind of like more steady and stable position financially. 10th of December can be a day of excess. <laughs> especially of excessive spending or excessive uh, enjoyment with Venus in opposition to, uh, to Jupiter, and you might end up spending more than you wanted to, so careful not to go overboard. 11th of December, um, this could actually be a, a, a good day to have maybe to have a difficult conversation with a boss because they're likely to be um, very accommodating. 
Uh, 12th of December, there's a new one in your ninth house uh, happening in Sagittarius, active three days before, three days after. I feel like you're starting a new chapter. Um, something new is kicking off, my dear Aries, when it comes to maybe academic matters, maybe when it comes to uh, university studies, but also when it comes to your involvement with foreign lands and foreign countries, Aries. You are quite excited because uh, Jupiter, the ruler of this uh, new moon, is in a nice aspect to Mercury. Maybe you're going to start working in some shape or form with someone from abroad or with like an international uh, maybe um, company office or something like that. Maybe you're going to start working with your colleagues from a different country. It does seem to be something that opens you up to maybe um, an opportunity to grow, to expand, um, both in terms of knowledge, but also in terms of um, life perspective, I'd, I'd say. The one thing that I don't like is that the new one is in a square to Pisces, uh, to Neptune and Pisces, my apologies. So there might be some terms and uh, conditions, or there might be some aspects to this, to this new chapter of, of maybe you being involved with, with, uh, uh, foreign lands, foreign countries, maybe, um, an international kind of like, um, let's say, entity, there might be some aspects, especially of a legal nature, that you are not very, 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 very clear on. And I would recommend before you sign anything or before you agree to anything, I would recommend that you read the fine print. And also Mercury is going to go retrograde right after, so there could be some delays in terms of the whole thing kicking off. Let's see. I like the 18th of December because Mercury is going to trine Jupiter again, so it does feel like a productive conversation is happening on the career front, uh, maybe when it comes to tactics, uh, when it comes to uh, t the tools that you use to get the job done. Um, you might also present once again maybe something that you've presented in the past to a wider audience in the, um, in the workplace, and you might also feel like you have found um, some sort of important, some sort of significant answer to a question connected with your health, and you might also spend some money on health, but it seems to be money very, very well spent. 21st of December, Venus is going to oppose Uranus and Taurus. Careful when it comes to um, maybe unexpected expenses or being charged the incorrect amount. Uh, the sun is going to go into Capricorn. Uh, 22nd of December, Capricorn season uh, kicks off, um, and um, it's going to conjunct Mercury retrograde. We've got a Mercury Kazemi out of the whole, um, let's say, Mercury retrograde period, 13th of December until the 2nd of January. The 22nd of December could actually be a really good day to do mercurial things. So um, to hold a presentation, to finalize a thesis, to communicate something important to the, to the world. 25th of December, Christmas time, for those of you who are celebrating Christmas, um, a very, very, very romantic day. Uh, Venus is trining Neptune. It's a great day to relax, to chill, to enjoy the presence of loved ones. And because we're talking about Venus and Scorpio, and we know Venus and Scorpio loves intimacy, a great day to enjoy intimacy. 27th of December, uh, a beautiful full moon. The year ends beautifully with a bang. Um, full moon in Cancer, active three days before, three days after. Uh, this full moon is in a very nice aspect with both Jupiter in your house of income and uh, Saturn. What is this telling us? It's telling us that you are finalizing something home-wise and maybe also from a professional perspective. It feels like you are completing uh, something that you've worked really hard towards, be it on the professional side, be it on the personal side, or maybe on both ends. Uh, it could be, for instance, that maybe you finally get that raise, that you get that promotion, and you you kind of like tell your family, listen, we're going to be able to, I don't know, renovate the home, or we're going to be able to to move to a big into a bigger place. Um, it does feel like a time when you are enjoying the company of, of loved ones, of family, you're probably spending time with family. Uh, it could also be a culminating point in terms of uh, maybe um, purchasing a home or finalizing something um, connected with a space that you live in. Financially, you're in a very good position. You do seem to have worked really hard for this. Um, I like it. I like it. I, I really, really like this, uh, this, full, uh, this full moon. The 20th of December, I have already uh, warned you about it. And 29th of December, Venus enters Sagittarius in your ninth house uh, until the 23rd of January. So you're going to have approximately one month um, for Venus to smooth out any sort of uh, <laughs> bumps or, 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 or kinks in the, in the uh, uh, processes connected with traveling, academia, or um, anything that has to do with legal entities or legal institutions.
My dear Taurus, Taurus suns and Taurus risings, what does December, what does the last month of 2023 have in store for you? Okay, so I feel like you're going to be paying a lot of money, <laughs> but it's probably going to be money well, uh, well spent. So you could be paying taxes. Um, I feel like you could be uh, paying off credit cards. Um, it feels like you do need to get off your plate some, some, some sort of like financial matters, let's, uh, let's say, you might be a little bit extra, extra impulsive when it comes to buying things for others this month with Mars um, transiting your eighth house of other people's money. So you might be very kind of like quick in, in, I don't know, like purchasing gifts or maybe purchasing a lot of gifts or, or maybe even getting people things that they don't really need, I'd say. There is a I don't want to say a likelihood, but there can be a bit of a little bit of a higher chance this month um, for arguments to pop up with your partner, especially if you do have a partner over financial matters. You might not be exactly, exactly, exactly on the same page when it comes to spending money. Um, why is that? Because of Mars trends in your eighth house. So you, you might be a little bit annoyed or a little bit frustrated at how your partner is spending money. Um, it could be a life partner, but it could also be a business partner, just as an FYI. Mercury is also going to be a retrograde. And it's actually going to be retrograde in your eighth house of shared assets, shared resources, other people's money. So the Mercury retrograde starts on the 13th of December and Mercury goes into your eighth house on the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. So especially from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, be careful because um, things might get misinterpreted. Um, your messages might might be kind of like misconstrued when it comes to you uh, bringing to your partner's attention a financial, a financial matter. Uh, there could also be mistakes made when it comes to money and finances, especially throughout this period, 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. Be careful that you haven't been charged the wrong amount. Um, there could be papers or paperwork getting a little bit, I don't know, lost in the mail, lost in, in, in transport, um, especially papers and, and, uh, and mail connected with money, finances, taxes, and, and, and all of that. I do realize, I mean, I'm, I'm based in the UK. I have no idea how it works in, in other places around the world, but here in the UK, um, those who have to submit a self-assessment, so those who have to kind of like pay their own taxes, maybe because they're not like they're working for themselves or, or they, they have their own company. Um, a lot of them submit that to end of the year and taxes need to be paid by the 31st of January, if I'm not mistaken. So there could be mistakes made. Careful when it comes to typos and mistakes made and papers getting lost in the mail uh, or, or even in the uh, email kind of like uh, route, um, especially between the, the last week of December until the 2nd of January. I would, I would be very careful what you say, how you, how you, approach things, how you present a situation to a partner, um, especially when it comes to financial matters, around the 20th of December, maybe also day before, day after, when Mercury conjuncts Mars in your eighth house and squares Neptune. So here there could be a full-blown fight. Uh, maybe someone feels very attacked. Uh, because uh, they might feel, I don't know, like controlled or they might feel like you're not appreciating what they're trying to do with their money. So let's say you're in a relationship and your partner tries to get you something nice and you're like, no, but we had a different goal. We wanted to save money for, I don't know, for buying a house or whatnot. Um, and then they, they get all kind of like touchy feely and probably for good reason, and it blows up. So careful because uh, small things could blow up and especially matters connected with finances could blow up around this around this time. There could also be a matter that blows up that you potentially might fight over uh, with, uh, with a partner. A matter connected with intimacy. I'm gonna put it out there. Maybe it doesn't necessarily appear as being intimacy related to, to, to start with. Maybe it is, I don't know, presented by your partner as having something to do with them not liking to, to hang out with your friends, for, for, for example, but it might actually be a cry for, for, for kind of more attention or for more um, quality time with you, my dear, uh, my dear Torians, I'd, uh, I'd say. Also what you say around the 28th of December, maybe also the day before the day after, careful because you might hurt a friend and it might really damage your relationship. So 
careful with people's triggers. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. And sometimes like being blunt in 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 our speech and uh, talking without thinking, which is a very Mars Mercury thing. Um, speaking fast, but also speaking impulsively out of impulse, it might hurt uh, someone very, very dear to you. It could also damage your reputation within a, a circle of, of, of people. So maybe not worth doing it. Just, just putting it out there. This day, 28th of December, also a few days before, a few days after, it's kind of like a foot in the mouth period. <laughs> so now you, now you know, I think that's the expression, foot in the mouth. Yeah. When you say things that, uh, haven't been thought through very, very carefully. Going back to Mercury retrograde, probably one of the most important transits of this month. Um, it starts on the 13th of December. It ends on the 2nd of January. It starts in your ninth house. So from the 13th of December until the 23rd, there could be delays, cancellations, misunderstandings, um, things getting lost in translation, things not going uh, in, in a very straightforward manner when it comes to traveling, especially long distance traveling, uh, when it comes to legal matters and when it comes to academic matters. Beginning of the month, 1st of December, Mercury goes into your ninth house. Um, you might actually feel like your mind is very, very active um, and um, very eager to, to get things done, um, especially when it comes to paperwork, when it comes to writing things, communicating things um, in the academic environment, but also uh, maybe when it comes to, for instance, running a marketing um, campaign. I like the 2nd of December because it feels like you can get a lot of hard work done um, when it comes to studies, but also when it comes to legal matters. So it would be a great day to do your taxes, for instance. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. I feel like a relationship could uh, suffer in the workspace, potentially here, Taurians, because of cultural differences or beca because one of you isn't very aware of, of kind of like culturally like sensitive topics. So careful what you say. This could also be a day when you're not really feeling that well health wise, maybe because you might have caught a virus or something. It can be a day where, um, so it's not mandatory for this to happen. You know, astrology doesn't predict concrete manifestation, but it could be a day when you might be extra sensitive to bacteria, so careful with food poisoning and things like, like that. Venus goes into your house of relationships from the 4th of December until the 29th of December. I like this Venus transiting Scorpio, your seventh house, because it might feel like the relationship overall with a partner. I know that I flagged a few, a few things at the beginning, but overall the relationship might feel like it's, it's, it's going a lot smoother. Venus does like to smooth things out and to make things more, more enjoyable. For those of you who are not in a relationship and maybe you would like to be, you don't have to, but maybe you would like to be, um, this could actually be a really good time to go out on dates, to say yes to, to, to people inviting you out on, uh, on dates from the 4th of December until the 29th. I like the 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn. So here it feels like you are agreeing with either a life partner or a business partner or an advisor of, of some sorts. You are agreeing something connected with your long-term goals. You're agreeing to collaborate on something in the long term. You're, um, you're agreeing to kind of like, um, to, to join forces, to make something happen in the long term. Um, this could also be a very good day for business networking, my lovely Taurians. So now you know. 8th of December and the 18th of December. These are some really nice days. Why? Because Mercury is going to trine Jupiter. Mercury in your ninth house is trining Jupiter in your first house, uh, my dear Taurus. So you could have some really good news around this time uh, connected with money and income. Also some really good news connected with academia and academic matters. Um, if you need to present a thesis, if you need to present something in front of the world, something that you, um, that you have written, something that you've studied and, and prepared um, over a long time, it's probably gonna be very, very, very well received. It is generally, both of these days are really good days to take exams. Um, there are good days to travel. And I know one of them is happening uh, when Mercury is retrograde, 18th of, uh, 18th of December. Um, it might be a good idea on the 18th of December to either plan to travel or to physically travel to a place that you've been to in the past. So not necessarily a new place. Um, 
you might also really enjoy being out in, in the world uh, around these uh, around these times, my dear Taurus. So connecting with people, connecting with friends, connecting with with people that are that are um, close to your close to your heart in some uh, in some shape or form. Um, and it might also feel like it's not just all for fun. It's also like a very constructive get together and you're getting more than just fun out of these outings. Not that there is anything wrong with fun. I love fun. I think many of us do, and I think we probably need a bit more <laughs> in in our life and world. 10th of December, Venus opposes Jupiter. Mm. So this can be a day of excess, um, especially when it comes to overdoing things on the relationship front. So let's say you want to you want to um, sweep someone off their off off their feet. Uh, there is a tendency to go overboard. Um, the other possibility is that someone else might go a little bit overboard with trying to win you over and you might call their bluff or you might realize actually this thing that you're doing right now is a little bit, a little bit, a little bit unsustainable. It might also feel like someone is trying too hard and it, it is a little bit off. It is a little bit off putting. I, um, I want to say. 12th of December, there is a new one happening in your eighth house. Um, this can be 12th of December, three days before, three days after. This can usher in some sort of a new beginning when it comes to joint um, joint assets, joint resources, uh, shared assets, shared income, shared finances together with your partner. Maybe you're agreeing to um, address the family budget differently for um, for instance. Maybe you're also agreeing to start working with someone else um, in order to generate money uh, money together. You might also approach the whole topic of investments a little bit um a little bit differently so it might feel like a like a fresh start in that um in that regards you might also agree to maybe set some money aside to pay for some home and family related uh related matters jupiter is nicely aspected to mercury which i really really um i really like this i feel like you are very positive and optimistic overall about this kind of like new budget thing, especially shared kind of like, kind of like budget. Um, for those of you who have a partner, your partner could start making more money around this uh, around this time, or they could have some good news financially. The only challenge is that the new moon is in a tense aspect to Neptune, so maybe it feels like if you do, um, if you share this sort of like new approach to budgets, uh, shared assets, if you share it with the world, if you share it with your friends, for instance, they might not get it, I'd, uh, I'd say. There could also be a sense of a little bit of vagueness and maybe excessive idealism when it comes to some sort of joint goal that you have together with someone else let's say a partner, uh, a joint goal um, that involves pooling money together. I would recommend being very descriptive and and going into details when it comes to the actual agreement I uh, I want to I want to say. Twenty first of December. Let's see what's happening here. Venus is opposing Uranus in your first house. Um, it feels like someone who's trying to get on your good side is just kind of like <sighs> is just annoying you tremendously. And because maybe they're trying too hard, and because maybe you're kind of like reading through them and you're seeing what their hidden intentions are, uh, your tendency is to to kind of like cut them off, even if they are maybe as I said, trying to be appeasing and, and uh, accommodating. This can actually be a day when you maybe feel suffocated by someone uh, who you're in a relationship with. And you 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 might be a little bit, um, what is the word, Br brusque? You might be a bit abrupt with, uh, with them. Some folks, and this is not the only, I'm going to put it out there, this is not the only... Um, aspect necessary to indicate this type of occurrence, but some folks might decide to call it quits, to call it quits on a relationship around this, around this time. Um, you could also come across as, as very, very shocking to, to the people that you are interacting with on this, uh, on this day, because you're, you're kind of like, you're going against the, the grain and against the, um, position that would normally appease people. Capricorn season starts on the 22nd of December, and we've also got a Mercury Kazemi on this day. Um, it could actually be a very, very good idea to um, finalize some sort of 
academic process to finalize a learning chapter to maybe uh, submit um, submit some sort of like legal uh, document to maybe sign a contract, I'd say. And I know that Mercury is retrograde, but out of the whole retrograde period, this is my favorite day with Mercury Cassini to uh, do all of the aforementioned uh, things. 25th of December, very romantic day, Venus try Neptune, great day to uh, connect with your romantic partner, to celebrate together, to go out into the world together. You might do some sort of a group joint activity together with your partner. So maybe you're meeting friends and you're, you're, you're enjoying life together with friends. It feels like a very relaxing day. And for those of you who are not in a relationship, it could actually be uh, a day when you connect with someone romantically when you are out into the world surrounded by your people. Years. The year ends with a beautiful bang, if I might add. Uh, 27th of December, three days before, three days after active, there's a full moon activating your third house, ninth house axis. Very nicely aspected to Jupiter and to Saturn. So some of you are going to accomplish some sort of a long-term goal connected with your studies. Some of you are probably going to get the green light, the positive results, the very auspicious results connected with your visa application. Some of you might pass their driver's license exam. Some of you might purchase a car. Some of you might uh, hear some really positive news connected with, um, with siblings. Some of you might announce to the world that you have decided to study something, um, something new potentially, something that is much more aligned with who you have evolved into over the past year, I'd, uh, I'd say. Some of you could be physically traveling, and if you are physically traveling, I am just gonna say it, you're probably gonna really, really, really enjoy it, uh, especially if you're traveling together with friends or to connect with, uh, with friends. 29th of December until the 23rd of January, Venus transits your eighth house. Okay, so I told you how there might have been some, some bumpy, and like times, bumpy roads in uh, December when it comes to the area of shared assets and shared finances, taxes maybe, Venus comes in and uh, really helps you to smooth things out, both together with your partner, but also when it comes to, for instance, um, paying off your credit card. Um, Venus transiting the eighth house could also bring your way gifts and opportunities for investment, opportunities to grow from an abundance perspective through other people's resources. But remember, you are completely responsible for your financial decisions, and this is not financial advice. Last but not least, Venus transiting your eighth house might make the whole aspect of, of deeply connecting with someone at a, at, a, at a very profound level. It might make that very, very enjoyable, I'd, I'd say. So I like it. And Jupiter also goes direct on the 31st of December. Told you it's a, it's a nice end to the, uh, to the year. My dear Geminis, Gemini suns and Gemini risings, what does December look like for you? Well, 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 there is a few significant transits coming up. Probably one of the transits to be the most aware of is the following. Mercury retrograde. Mercury is going to be retrograde from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. Mercury is your chart ruler, which is why generally, I'm, and I'm referring here specifically to those of you who are um, Gemini Risings, the chart ruler speaks very much to who you are as a person, uh, what you're invested into. It speaks very much to how you feel in your body as, uh, as well. It might actually speak quite a bit to how you feel um, vitality-wise. Um, and with Mercury Retrograde, from the middle of December, 13th of December until the 2nd of January. First, it's going to be retrograde in your 8th house from the 13th of December until the 23rd, and then in your 7th house of relationships. What can you expect? So, there is a possibility that you might be feeling a little bit, a little bit, a little bit misunderstood for the entire duration of the Mercury retrograde. Um, there could also be a, um, a feeling of maybe having a bit of a harder time concentrating, focusing on matters that have to do with money, taxes, finances, um, investments, shared assets, shared resources, um, conversations, especially, especially from the 13th of December until the 23rd, conversations around money, investments, taxes, credit cards, uh, money that you've got in common with someone else, they might not go exactly as expected. 
they might not um, land as you intended them to, um, to land. There could be all sorts of misunderstandings, disagreements, delays on this front. If you are looking to submit your taxes, for example, um, I would be uh, extra kind of like careful to make sure that your email or your uh, or your mail has uh, reached its its uh, destination. There is a possibility that um, you might discover um, typos or or mistakes in. Um, financial documents, especially from, as I said, the 13th until the 23rd. Then from the 23rd until the 2nd of January, communication with partners, life partners, but also business partners. Once again, it might not really go as you thought it would go. It might also feel like old um, issues, old areas of, of uh, contention, old topics of contention are coming back to your attention. Now, why do I believe that there could be um, topics of contention that come back to your attention. <laughs> I'm not even trying to rhyme <laughs> because the entire month Mars is going to be in your seventh house. What does that tell us? It tells us that uh, the people that you interact with, especially partners, life partners, business partners, collaborators, um, consultants, um, you might um, you might find them to be extra dominant, impulsive, um, temperamental, pushy, um, blunt, uh, and um, you might find them to be a little bit extra kind of like on edge and keen to jump into an argument. You might find them um, extra combative this, uh, this month. Of a particularly sticky time in terms of arguments and conflicts, especially with, as I said, partners and business partners, a particularly sticky time is coming up on the 20th of December, also maybe the day before the day after, when Mercury conjuncts Mars. I mean, the, the, the potential for there to be an explosive conversation is very high on this, on this day. The potential for you to get into an argument is extra high. Uh, you could also get into an argument with a parent. That's also very, very possible um, around, this, around this time. And um, you might be uh, incredibly like hurt because maybe what they say is 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 very uh, is very painful you might also inadvertently um my dear joe and i say something that really kind of like puts puts salt on their wounds and maybe that was not your intention at all but they might really kind of like have this this um explosive verbal reaction so careful what you say <laughs> Don't jump to conclusions. Don't take things personally. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be my uh, that would be my recommendation. There's plenty of good stuff happening this month, Gemini's. But I did want to flag the Mercury retrograde because Mercury, as I said, is your ruler, and it's extra, extra, extra important for 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 you folks. Second of December, Mercury sextile Saturn. I feel like you can have some really constructive conversations here with bosses, but also with uh, the people that you collaborate with in a um, in a work environment. And there could be um, a sense of of getting the job done when it comes to some sort of financial uh, matters. Maybe financial matters that took a long time to to get over the over the finish line, as they uh, as they say. You might also make some sort of significant progress on this day when it comes to um, legal matters connected with your career, my dear Gemini's. 3rd of December, Venus squares, um, Venus squares Pluto. Uh, this could be a time when you find out something about um, either a romantic partner or about your children. I'm like, you might find out something. Forgive me, forgive me. You might find you might literally find out something that could be a little bit disturbing about either a romantic partner or a child if you have uh, children. Why could it be disturbing? Because it could be something that they've kept secret from you for, for quite some time and you could feel like your trust is or has been a little bit a little bit betrayed. I would not necessarily hide things from from uh, kids or from romantic partners around this day because they might find out that you've been hiding stuff and you might um, lose their trust. So it can go both ways. Venus enters your house of day-to-day -day work from the 4th of December until the 29th. Um, generally, this is considered to be a good time for you to enjoy the work that you're doing. So if there is any work that needs to get done over December, which there probably is, 
Uh, it might feel like it's maybe easier to to collaborate with colleagues, to collaborate with co-workers, and generally you might enjoy a lot more the, the work that you are uh, looking to, to accomplish. I'm liking the 5th of December as a particularly auspicious day from a work and career perspective. It feels like you are sealing the deal on an important partnership. It feels like you are accomplishing something that took a long time to to um, to accomplish, maybe because it required you to persuade some people. It feels like you are maybe finalizing something together with someone else in a professional space and you're receiving a lot of praise and you're receiving a lot of positive feedback from bosses, from people in positions of authority. Um, it feels like... Um, the job is beautifully done and everyone is happy on this day. 8th of December, Mercury trines Jupiter. I like this. I feel like uh, you could have some, some really good results around this time with investments. There could be an opportunity for investment. There could be some good news connected with finances in, uh, in general, maybe taxes. Maybe you find out that you got less tax to pay. You could be clearing stuff out of your, uh, off your plate in terms of uh, payments that need to be, uh, that need to be made. Your partner could also have some really good news connected with their financial situation. Maybe they're getting a bonus. You might be hearing news of a bonus. I'm liking this. Uh, the 18th of December is also quite a similar energy. Maybe, um, because Mercury is retrograde and um, it's going to be trining Jupiter, maybe you you um, receive a bonus that was delayed or you receive, I don't know, the commission on something that you should have received a while ago and now you're finally getting it. If you were waiting for um, dividends or, or for a lump sum of money, you could finally f um, find, I don't know, that email that says, okay, this is going to be with you. Um, uh, by the end of the year. So I'm liking um, both the 8th and the 18th of December for good news from a financial perspective for you, um, Geminis. 10th of December could be a day of excess for, for most people. Venus is in opposition to Jupiter. For you in particular, uh, my dear Geminis, I would be... Uh, I would be extra cautious with any sort of excesses, especially when it comes to maybe uh, having too much sugar or too much to drink, because it could result in feeling really bad health-wise, like really bad. <laughs> so yeah, it might be fun whilst you're doing it, but it might not be worth it. So the decision is with, uh, is the ball is in your court. The decision is completely, completely up to, up to you. New moon, 12th of December, active three days before, three days after. A new moon happening in your seventh house. I feel like this could be the beginning of a new relationship. Uh, for some of you, romantic, but not necessarily. I feel like this could be the beginning of a new partnership, especially business-wise. Um, maybe of a new collaboration business, uh, business-wise. It could be something maybe that you do on the side or something that you do behind the scenes. Uh, maybe something that promises to pay... Uh, extra extra well with with uh commission and all of that you might get like a percentage of what you of, of of what you sell or something along those lines however if you are agreeing to a partnership remember that the new one is going to be square uh in a square to neptune what does that tell us it tells us that um the terms of the partnership might not be very clear and that might backfire so there could be parts or or aspects that are quite vague and ambiguous and further down the line it could result in frustration because you haven't really agreed on on how things are going to play out you could also um enter into a collaboration uh, professionally that maybe you're not very keen to share with the outside world because um, if you might feel like you could somewhat suffer from the association maybe with this person or with this type of uh, entity. This could also be a time when you start working maybe with an accountant, a new accountant, a new advisor, a new um, career coach or someone like, uh, or someone like that. Uh, careful not to under... no. Let me, let me put this differently. Careful not to overestimate um, the potential results that you're going to get out of this collaboration. Uh, there might be this sense of, of kind of like putting this collaboration on a pedestal and, and expecting like really big things and having this sort of like fantasy of how it's going to turn out and then be disappointed because the fantasy, let's face it, rarely <laughs> aligns with the 3D reality. So that's the only thing that I wanted to put uh on uh, on your radar for those of you who are in a relationship this could also um this new moon could bring in a new beginning for your partner um when it comes to their home life family life maybe when it comes to one of their parents 
something something um is happening maybe in the life of one of their parents where uh, they are letting go of an aspect of, of of their lives maybe i don't know let's say your one of your in-laws for example is retiring that is a possibility I like the 18th of December, as I flagged, 21st of December, Venus uh, opposes Uranus. Um, I feel like if you want to get something done at work, there could be all sorts of random, unexpected stuff coming up, maybe also of a technological nature that get in the way. Um, you might have an unexpected um, falling out with a colleague or a co-worker on this day. 22nd of December, um, Capricorn season starts, um, and... The sun is going to conjunct Mercury. I like this because it's a Mercury Kazemi day. Um, a very auspicious day, a very good day to um, agree, for instance, with your partner. Um, and it could be life partner or business partner on how to spend money together on long-term goals connected with shared assets and shared kind of like finances. A really good day to talk about um, difficult matters and to reach a new agreement, maybe difficult matters that have been on both of your radars for quite some time. Uh, conversations are likely to, to, to kind of like reach their intended result on this uh, on this day. 25th of December, one of the most romantic days of the month. Uh, Venus trines Neptune. Um, if you want to do something nice for your partner, if you want to put an effort, if you want to do something that is really going to sweep them off their feet, this is the day to do so. Also a day of success professionally. Um, Maybe it's a day when you celebrate your professional successes. It feels like you can relax finally after some really bumpy rides this year, uh, career-wise, my dear, uh, my dear Gemini's. Also, you could receive some sort of like gift or or uh, news of, of of gifts of some sort, um, either from colleagues, coworkers, bosses, or a parent, or all of the aforementioned. Why not? Why not? Also, a day in which you might feel finally very, very relaxed. Um, after, again, a few bumps in the road um, this month uh, when it comes to your health, my dear, uh, my dear Geminis. The year ends with a beautiful, beautiful full moon um, activating your financial axis 27th of December, three days before, three days after. It feels like something is coming to completion, to a, to a culminating point, to, to, a, to an end, actually, in terms of money and finances. Maybe you are... Um, you're finally receiving the news around the 27th of December of a raise. Maybe you're finally clearing off debt. Uh, maybe, maybe you're finally getting paid uh, a significant amount of money by um, a contractor or, or someone who you've provided services um, for. Why do I like this full moon? Because it's nicely aspected to both Jupiter and Saturn. So I feel like you've worked really hard to make this money. Uh, you could get a commission, you could get a bonus, you could get, as I said, you could get paid a significant amount. Uh, you might also decide to use some of that money to get rid of um, expenses, taxes, credit card debts, and so on. And maybe you are, not maybe, very likely, you might use some of that money to also gift um, things or, or even money or even cash to um, to others. I told you 28th of December could be a little bit, a little bit sticky in terms of arguments. 29th of December until the 23rd of January, Venus goes into your house of relationships and finally I feel like you are going to enjoy uh, some smoother times relationship-wise and romantically. Also, 29th of December until the 23rd of January, really good time to date people if you are interested in a relationship. No one says that you have to be, but if that is of interest, then go for it. My lovely Cancerians, Cancer Suns and Cancer Risings, like yours truly here, what does December have in store for us? Well, I'll tell you what it has in store for us. Um, we're gonna be busy, and I mean busy, like real busy this month. Mars, planet of action, energy, stamina, the ruler of our career. Mars is transiting our sixth house of day-to-day -day work. There's so much that we need to get done, and I feel like you're probably gonna get a lot done by yourselves, my dear Cancerians. You might not necessarily be in the mood for cooperation or collaboration work-wise. That could actually backfire a little bit, a little bit, Cancerians, especially around the 20th of December, 
maybe a day before, a day after, when uh, Mars conjuncts Mercury in your house of day-to-day -day, uh, work and it squares Neptune. So you could say something to a colleague, to a client, to uh, a collaborator that really hurts them. And maybe that was not your intention. Maybe you just said it carelessly. Maybe you just kind of like threw it out there and you're like, ah, pff, leave me alone. <laughs> or get out of my way. Y you might end up upsetting someone uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, careful, because it's not worth... I don't think it's worth damaging your relationship with this person unless you want to cut them out of your life for good, unless you want to tell them, listen, I no longer want to work with you or I'm done, um, then I would... This is a good day to bite your tongue. <laughs> Cancerians, and you know that I don't normally recommend anything like this. This is probably the first time you've heard me say this. Um, but yeah, careful what you say. Um, you might also hurt someone's uh, feelings, maybe because you voice some opinions that are contrary to their um, worldview, belief system, and so on. It could turn into a full-blown argument. Um, is it worth it? I don't know. It could damage a little bit your reputation. I don't know. Maybe sometimes sometimes it's worth like pushing that, that brake pedal and thinking before you say something. Just putting it out there. I would, I would certainly recommend against traveling around the 20, 28th of December, if you can. If you, if you can help it, Cancerians. Please maybe travel some other time. Uh, why? Because with, with Mercury conjunct Mars squaring Neptune in your ninth house of traveling, there's bound to be some sort of disruption. There's bound to be some sort of disappointment connected with, especially long, long distance traveling. Uh, so if you can travel really at any other time, that would be, that would be great. Going back to the very beginning of the month, uh, 2nd of December, Mercury in your seventh house of relationships, sextile Saturn. I feel like you are agreeing with your partner uh, when it comes to um, maybe some sort of a, of, a, of a trip that you're planning to take. You could also have some very productive conversations with a legal advisor, maybe even a financial um, advisor. Uh, you could also feel very inspired by a conversation with someone to work on your long-term goals, especially academic um, goals. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. I feel like a relationship uh, with with a family member, especially, so it could be a parent or any family member, could be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit undermined, maybe by a secret. Maybe you kept something secret, maybe they kept something secret, but I feel like something's been bubbling under the surface and a relationship could suffer. I, I'm not gonna say that honesty is the best policy because I, on paper, I agree with that. In reality, Many times people, I mean, honesty can actually damage some relationships. But in this particular case, um, maybe it is worth opening up and, and being authentic with, with, uh, with a family member because otherwise it might just feel like the relationship cannot be repaired. Venus enters your fifth house of enjoyment, Cancerians, um, 4th of December until the 29th. I mean, this is, this is a beautiful time to really enjoy life together with loved ones, your children, um, your friends. It's a very romantic time. It's a great time to go out on dates. It's a great time to go out to party. Uh, there are a few days that might not be so, 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 so great, but I'm gonna flag them to you and, and uh, why that is. But generally, um, Venus transiting the fifth house is a very pleasant time uh, for, for all things that make us feel alive and happy. And it could also feel like a very um, inspiring time from a creativity perspective. Now, what are the days when I would recommend exercising a little bit of caution when it comes to partying, uh, going out, uh, saying yes to dates? Um, let's see. Well, the 10th of December, there could be a little bit of excessive partying, excessive, I don't know, drinking, excessive, excessive pleasure, uh, let's say, and you might end up uh, hurting physically. I mean, you might wake up with a big hangover or or um, you could really feel like maybe um, all the socialization and all the partying and all the entertainment is interfering with your work. So very possible, very possible. I'm just going to put it out there. 
I'm also not a big fan of the 21st of December when Venus is in opposition to Uranus in your 11th house. Uh, friends could cancel on you at the last minute. You could have some really shocking or surprising interactions with friends and, and maybe with peers, maybe with colleagues. Um, you might really feel like you don't really uh, like to be in a, a certain in a certain group of people or in an audience or you, you're not really enjoying yourselves, Cancerians, when you're hanging out with these people and you might decide to leave. You might be like, uh, this is not my crowd, this is not my party. Sayonara, I don't need to be here. But going back to the beginning of the month, I really like the 5th of December when Venus is trining Saturn. This is a great day to go out on a date. It's a great day to um, consolidate a romantic relationship if you're already with someone. It's a great day to also work on a creative project together with someone else because it feels like you're gonna get a lot done. For those of you who have kids, it could also be a really um, important day in what sense for, for your child. You might feel very proud of how far they've come and of all the effort they've put into achieving something. So they might, uh, uh, they might make you very, very uh, proud and appreciative of, of them. 8th of December is one of my favorite days this month. The, well, I like the 5th, I like the 8th, I like the 18th and the 25th of December. These are probably some of my favorite days this, this month. Why do I like the 8th of December? Because Mercury trines Jupiter in your 11th house. So I feel like you're, you're having some really great conversations about the future with partners, with consultants, with a community of people. It feels like you are also maybe presenting something to a group of people and it is received very, very well. If you um, are in a group type of environment and you need to learn something, it feels like you're probably um, learning a lot and expanding your, your uh, level of knowledge tremendously and it's feeling fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I love it. Um, also, um, this could actually be a day when you, um, so both the 8th of December and the 18th, when you agree to work or to collaborate with a community of people, and it could actually be a very long-term thing and something that uh, helps you uh, grow from a professional perspective in the long term. And also it could help you grow in terms of knowledge and yeah, just kind of like general self-development, I'd, um, I'd say. Both the 8th of December and the 18th are really good days to kind of like talk about something on a stage or in front of a wide kind of like group of, of, of people. Um, also really good days to go out on dates. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just throwing in some romance in the mix. I cannot, I cannot help it. I, I am a hopeless romantic. Uh, no, actually, I do have a lot of hope for romance. I, I don't really like the phrase hopeless romantic. So uh, both, both the 8th and the 18th, uh, if you decided to go out on, on, on dates on any of these days, um, you'd probably enjoy it very, very much, especially if you're doing something out into the world um, where, I don't know, there's, there's a sense of connection with a wider group of people, for example, going to a concert or attending some sort of a, of a, um, of a group class type of, uh, type of thing. What else, what else, what else? 12th of December, new moon happening in your sec in your sixth house, my dear Cancerians, active three days before, three days after. New job, new work project, new work chapter, uh, maybe also new um, set of daily habits and daily routines. So you might, I don't know, start going to the gym again, or you might start eating less sugar for, uh, for instance. It feels like you're committing to something new, either job-wise or health-wise. If you are committing to something new, um, I like the fact that Jupiter is nicely aspected to Mercury. So if you're doing this new thing, this new job, this new work project, or this new health thing, together with um, a group of people, or even with a partner, like a gym buddy, for example, it does look like you've got much, 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 much higher chances of success. However, uh, the new one is in a swear to Neptune. Some of the maybe goals or ideals that you're hoping to achieve by committing to this new routine or this new project, they might be a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> they might be a little bit far-fetched. They might be a little bit hard to accomplish. So yeah, I mean, Manage expectations, your expectations, other people's expectations, Cancerians, because uh, Neptune can, can kind of 
bring this sort of like fog over our eyes and make us see things in a much more glamorous light than they actually are. Um, if you are going to start a collaboration with, with um, some sort of a company from, from overseas or a company that has offices overseas or if you work in an international environment, I do recommend uh, sprucing up your, your knowledge, understanding and awareness of, of cultural sensitivities and also of the legislation of, of maybe these sort of like various kind of like countries that you're going to be uh, working with. Because if you don't, that could get you in hot water, that could interfere with your ability to get the job done, Cancerians. Mercury goes retrograde 13th of December until the 2nd of, uh, until the 2nd of January. Mercury is the ruler of your 12th house and also of your third house of communication. What does that tell me? It's telling me that there could be some challenges, some troubles in communication with partners, colleagues, co-workers, aunts, uncles, clients, and maybe advisors such as your accountant, for example. There could be some, some things that are lost in translation, some things that are not communicated properly throughout this period. So I would recommend checking in. I would recommend following up from emails. I would recommend um, keeping a close eye on any sort of like um, emails or, or paperwork that you send to these people because there might be typos and mistakes. Just putting it out there. Uh, there, is a, there is an opportunity to maybe collaborate with people who you've worked with in the past. They might get back to you and say, wow, we've done such a good job together like three years ago and they might get back to you during the Mercury retrograde, which would be a really nice idea. Um, your partner might have some car trouble, especially from the 13th until the 23rd of December, it's possible. Um, and as a result, they might be a little bit extra, I don't know, <laughs> reactive, let's, uh, let's say. Twenty second of December, Capricorn season starts. Um, Capricorn season uh, activates your seventh house of relationships, so it does feel like your focus is going to be on relationships quite uh, quite a bit. Um, I like the twenty second uh, of December also because the Sun conjuncts Mercury, so we've got a Mercury Kazemi, the beginning of a new Mercury cycle. A great day to sign an outstanding business contract. And I know Mercury is retrograde, but let's say you've been kind of like back and forth negotiating with people. Um, and maybe there were some delays. Maybe there were kind of like some, some stop start type of uh, interactions. And during Mercury Kazemi, finally the, the, the contract arrives. I would still recommend paying very close attention to, to anything that you sign and making sure that there aren't any typos or mistakes. But out of the entire Mercury retrograde, the 22nd of December is a good day to sign contracts, to have important conversations, and to agree on long-term goals together with someone else. 25th of December, very romantic day, Venus trines Neptune, really like genuinely very romantic, very relaxing, very enjoyable. Um, you are feeling relaxed, you're feeling loved, you're feeling appreciated, a great day to travel, a great day to relax with a partner, um, even a great day to, to kind of like, um, to chill, to meditate, to listen to music, to just kind of like drift off. Uh, if you are in a relationship, to, um, I'm trying not to be cheesy and to find some metaphors that are not gonna be like super annoying. But yeah, to kind of like to drift off in each other's arms. I don't know, I love it. I love this day. I love this day. Very healing day from, from, a, uh, from, from an energetic perspective in conjunction with someone, with someone else. Full moon, end of the year. The year ends with a full moon, 27th of December, active three days before, three days after. It activates your, um, relationship access, so you versus others, um, it feels like you have come a long way. It feels like you are taking stock of how much you've progressed in the past year or maybe half a year. It feels like you are accomplishing something very, very important to you on a personal level, maybe like a personal development goal, like a self-development goal, maybe a goal related to your physical body. Maybe you're looking back and you're thinking, wow, I've worked so hard to like be in better shape or to uh, feel more, more kind of like vitalized or healthier. Um, the full moon is superbly aspected. I kid you not, I kid you not, Cancerians. It's superbly aspected to Jupiter and to Saturn. So it feels like you have accomplished a long-term personal goal. It feels like you've worked really hard for this. It could also be a long-term goal connected with a um, 
professional collaboration with a community of people. Um, it could also be a time when you when you feel very proud of what you have accomplished together with your colleagues, with your coworkers, with the community that you're uh, that you're a part of. It can also feel like um like a full moon. Um, of celebration when it comes to your um, romantic relationships uh, and, and maybe when it comes to relationships in general. So you could be celebrating together with, with a partner and maybe inviting people over and just kind of like generally having a good, good, good time. 29th of December, Venus goes into Sagittarius in your house of day-to-day -day work, uh, my dear Cancerians, until the 23rd of January and... Um, if there, I told, I told you that the end of the year is busy. But with Venus transiting your 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 sixth house of day to day work, you're probably gonna really enjoy what you're working on, um, and you're probably also gonna enjoy who it is that you're working with until the twenty third of uh, January. So some really, um, yeah, like really great collaborations. I I uh, I dare say. Um, you might also feel like it's very easy to stick to your routines, to stick to um, the habits, the routines, the rituals that. Um, make a positive difference when it comes to your general health, wellness, and uh, and well-being. And last but not least, end of the year, 20, 31st of December, Jupiter goes direct in your 11th house. So uh, all clear when it comes to achieving your long-term goals, especially when it comes to studies, academia, education, and work and health, my uh, my dear Cancerians. And that is December for uh, for you. My dear Leos, Leo suns and Leo rising. So what does December look like for, for you? Well, Leos, you're probably gonna be very pleased to hear that you're going to be putting a lot of energy into fun activities. You are going to be feeling very driven and motivated to have fun, to um, spend time doing the things that you enjoy doing, to spend time um, um, engaged in, in um, your passions, your hobbies, the activities that really make you feel alive, Leos. Why is that, you ask? Well, because Mars is going to be uh, transiting your fifth house of fun, enjoyment, passions, and hobbies. You're also probably going to be feeling extra energized to tackle creative projects. You might be feeling very, very inspired and really motivated to get things done when it comes to your creative projects. You might also feel very inspired to organize and to take the lead when it comes to fun activities with the family, together with the family this uh, this month. One very important transit that is that is happening this month, Leo's, is Mercury retrograde. So Mercury is going to be retrograde from the thirteenth of December until the second of um, until the second of January. Mercury for you rules your house of income and your 11th house of long-term goals, plans, uh, dreams, and um, it is also the ruler of your um, of your friendship sector. So some of the plans that you have made with friends in the second half of December until the 2nd of January might not exactly play out the way that you thought they would play out. So things might things might change. There is a possibility that uh, people might might need to reschedule, might need to cancel. I would be extra kind of like careful when it comes to sticky topics in conversation with friends uh, because there could be full-blown fights, full-blown arguments with friends, especially around the 28th of December, maybe also the day before the day after when Mercury conjuncts, uh, conjuncts Mars in your fifth house. Um, and you might end up fighting with a friend um, and potentially even damaging a relationship without necessarily intending to. Uh, also on the 28th of December, this is probably my least favorite day of the month. There's a lot of good days this month. I do want to put it out there. But the 28th is probably my least favorite day. Um, careful when it comes to activities that could... That could be seen as fun, but they might have a certain tinge of danger. And there, there could be a risk element involved. They could turn wrong. They could turn kind of, kind of like horribly wrong, I'd, I'd say. So, I don't know, I'm gonna give an example. Obviously, astrology doesn't predict concrete material manifestation. It's only, um, it is only a symbolic and archetypal language. But for instance, the 20th of December would not be a good day to 
go skydiving, for instance, for instance, that's the first thing. Or let's say you're playing football. Um, careful not to be extra competitive on this day because you might end up actually hurting someone or you might get hurt yourselves, uh, Leo. So yeah, just kind of like take it, take it, take it easy. Also, those of you who have kids, I would pay uh, very close attention to them on this day because when they're playing, they could end up um, hurting themselves or someone else without, I repeat, without intending to. Um, but um, it feels like people are not very cautious on this day. They're very impulsive. They might go overboard uh, and... Um, it could prove a little bit, a little bit destructive, even if it was all happening in a very like fun, entertaining environment, I'd, uh, I'd say. Mercury is gonna be retrograde from the 13th of December until the 23rd in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work. So um, maybe some of the projects that you, you are involved in work-wise, they might be put on pause or they might uh, experience all sorts of delays. There could be, um, mistakes that are made in terms of communication, in terms of papers, documents. Um, you might need to redo certain things, such as a report, for, for example. You might need to go back to old work projects, which isn't a bad thing, but you might just have to, yeah, make, make peace with it. And then from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of uh, the second of January, Mercury is going to be retrograde in your fifth house. Uh, you might feel like revisiting uh, old passions, old hobbies. Um, there's also a possibility, because the fifth house is the house of romantic love, that you might hear back or you might just think about after you haven't done so for a very long time. Yeah, you might think about some old flames romantically. I mean... It is, it, is, it is what it is, but um, careful not to um, be very impulsive about maybe reaching out to someone from your past and then regretting it and realizing that it wasn't such a good idea after the retrograde is over beginning of the year. 2nd of December is a day that I really like. Why? Mercury, sextiles, Saturn, it feels like um, together with um, maybe with a colleague or, or a co-worker or someone like an advisor, you are managing to fix an issue, to fix a problem at, uh, at work that has been giving you headaches. I also want to flag that on the 4th of December, Venus is going to enter your fourth house of home, family life, um, real estate, living situation um, from the 4th of December until the 29th of December. Um, you might feel very inclined to maybe um, purchase beautiful things for the home or, or uh, welcome people into your home or be a host um, or, or gift things to, to family to family members. And generally it is likely to be a, overall a very enjoyable time with, with, with your family uh, whilst Venus is transiting your fourth house of, uh, of home. The only two exceptions, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be great, but <laughs> there are two days that I'm that I'm not such a big fan of, um, the 10th of December and the uh, 21st of December. So on the 10th of December, there is a tendency to overdo things. So maybe to overspend or to overeat or to overdrink or to overparty or to literally overdo things that are supposed to be pleasant and enjoyable together with family members, and then potentially end up regretting them because if you overdo things. Like nothing that is overly, nothing that is excessive or extreme in, in kind of like big quantities is ever healthy, is it, right? So we gotta stop somewhere. But uh, Venus Jupiter is like more, more, I love more, I want more, I like more. More what? More pleasure, uh, Venus, right? There's also a possibility that on the 10th of December uh, or around this day, you might feel torn between spending time with the family and really enjoying their company and uh, saying yes to some sort of um, some sort of opportunity or, or something that has to do with your um, professional path. And you might feel like you can't say no to this opportunity because uh, if you were to say no, you would say no to the possibility of some sort of long-term growth. So you could feel a bit torn, uh, Leos. 
The 21st of December, uh, Venus is going to oppose Uranus and Taurus. It feels like maybe something very kind of like sudden, very much out of nowhere, might pop up uh, connected with your career, taking you away from home or taking you away from the focus on, on, on the family. I realize it's very close to Christmas. Maybe you were, you were on, your, on your holiday. Maybe you were uh, enjoying your time off and all of a sudden your boss calls and says, we need you to fix this, to put out this fire. So you might be frustrated. I will tell you this. A family member might not be very pleased with uh, with this um, either. You might even have a tiny, 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 tiny argument, or you could feel like their disappointment. I don't want to call it an argument, but you could feel like their disappointment is very obvious. I'd um, I'd say so. That's that's just something that I wanted to put out there. Going back to the beginning of the month, fifth of December. Venus trines Saturn. I love this day because it feels like together with a partner. It could be a it could be a life partner, it could be maybe a collaborator or an advisor of some sorts. You are managing to accomplish something very significant, very important that you've both put a lot of effort into and maybe that you've both actually put money into. It could be something connected with home life, family life. It could feel like you have accomplished something very significant, like you've built something very significant together with someone else at home. Um, this would be a great day to buy furniture, for instance, or to finalize um, piecing furniture together, for, for example, my, uh, my dear Leos. This could also be a very good day to work on the relationship with a family member, because it, you could really, really, really consolidate it. 8th of December, Mercury trines Jupiter in your 10th house of career. I like this. Good news coming over from your from your boss uh, when it comes to your, your professional path. Um, this could be a day of opportunities, of good news, of uh, maybe an opportunity to apply for a new job, of maybe an opportunity to step up from a professional perspective. My recommendation would obviously be to say yes, because you do have the great benefic on your side career-wise, especially Leo Risings, until May of next year. So if there was ever time to take a bit of a leap of faith professionally. It is now. It is a great day to have an interview. It's a great day to maybe also present something um, that you have worked on uh, to a broader audience in the professional, uh, in the professional space. Um, really, really um, beneficial conversations about your career are happening on this, uh, on this day. 10th of December, I flagged this. Venus in opposition to Jupiter, um, 12th of December. Okay, new moon, um, new beginning, active three days before, three days after in your fifth house, uh, followed by Mercury retrograde. Um, so a new moon with a delayed kind of uh, start in a way. Uh, it could feel like the, the seed moment is, is, is on your radar around the 12th of December, but then you have to push the brakes until the beginning of next year for whatever reason. This is a new one happening in your fifth house. So some of you, um, some of you Leos could start a new creative project, could start a new creative collaboration. Uh, some of you could start dating someone new. Uh, some of you uh, who have kids um, might um, experience this this new moon through your children. So your children could start some sort of a new educational chapter, or maybe they could start kind of playing a new sport or a new or a new game. Um, some of you could also discover a new a new passion or a new hobby around this time, uh, Leos. I like the fact that Jupiter trines Mercury. So I feel like if you're starting something fresh and new uh, of a creative nature, it could be something that you also benefit from, from a professional perspective. You could also start a new creative project in your professional uh, life and maybe start working on something that you really enjoy working on. Uh, this could also be a time when you start a new health related routine that maybe has an element of fun and play to it. I'd, um, I'd say Leo's. The one thing to keep in mind is that this new moon is an intense aspect to Neptune. So you might have very high expectations and very high kind of like, I don't know, like ideals and visions about how this is going to turn out. And you might end up feeling disappointed because the ideal is not really aligned with the reality. So careful not to just kind of like dream too big. I mean, we're talking about Sagittarius Neptune here. Uh, Sagittarius Pisces here, the, the, the kind of like the Sagittarius uh, Pisces square, the mutable square. Um, there can also be an energy of scatteredness, of not really being very clear on the details of how this is going to work out. So uh, you could be a little bit all over the shop. 
<laughs> and uh, add to that the fact that Mercury goes retrograde after uh, after the new moon. So I do be, I do believe that it would be wise to to get the details um, in in the right place to get the 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 kind of like the the bits and pieces um, the small stuff. The devil is in the details, as they say, to get it right so that it doesn't interfere with your goals further down the line. 18th of December is a day I really like because once again, Mercury retrograde this time is trining Jupiter in your 10th house. So maybe you're, you're picking back up where you left off some really important constructive conversations about your long term career, um, career goals. Um, it could also feel like this is a day when maybe uh, an old issue work wise gets solved by someone in a position of power. And it kind of like makes your life easier overall. You could also start um, working or going back to to collaborating with an old client, an old boss, someone who has been in your life professionally in the past in some um, in some shape or uh, or form. And it does seem to be something that uh, is is kind of like opening up possibly new doors for you, my dear, uh, my dear Leo's from a uh, from a career perspective. What else? What else is, is coming up? Capricorn season starts in your house of career, 22nd of December, uh, for the next month, your, your, your focus is going to be on work and health very, 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 very much. Um, 22nd of December is the day of Mercury Kazemi. Also, why do I like this? I mean, this could be a good day to present something in a work environment to agree uh, on, on, a, on a work collaboration with someone who you've been in touch with for quite some, uh, for quite some time. Uh, it could also be the day when you uh, get the good news connected with your salary that you've been waiting on for a long, for a long time. Um, and it's also a day to really talk shop and to talk about finances and, uh, and, and material matters. Um, because you're probably going to get people on your side. You're probably going to get out of them what it is that you want to get out of them. 25th of December, probably the most, probably the most romantic day of the entire month. Venus, Neptune, Venus in a trine to Neptune, a great day to enjoy um, a cozy, intimate, sensual, passionate, why not, um, experience or day together with a partner at, at home. Um, it can also be a very healing day when it comes to your relationship with a family member. 27th of December, three days before, three days after, we've got a full moon activating your axis of work and service. A great day to finalize a work project, to say goodbye to a job because there's something else much more exciting and better on the uh, on the horizon. There's something better waiting for you because the full moon is nicely aspecting Jupiter in your house of career. You could be saying goodbye to a team or to a team member because you're stepping up, because you're being promoted. Um, it is also generally a good time to, yeah, take some time off because the job is done. You, you've accomplished some really important things this year, uh, career-wise. Um, it also feels like this could be a time of, of um, a health-related chapter coming to a close in a very auspicious way. I like this full moon in so many, 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 many ways. Venus, 29th of December until the 23rd of January, is going to transit your fifth house. Um, Venus is the ruler of your um, of your professional path. I feel like you're going to be really enjoying and probably celebrating uh, from the end of the month until the 23rd of January. You're going to be really celebrating and, and enjoying uh, where your career is taking you, my uh, my dear Leos. And this is also a great time to, um, to go out, to go party, to go on dates, to enjoy team sports, um, to enjoy quality time together with your children. Uh, it might feel like the relationship with children in general is, is improving uh, tremendously. So I'm really, really, really liking this transit. Now, if you are a Virgo, Sun or Virgo uh, rising, uh, my lovely Virgos, what does the last month of 2023 have in store for you? Okay, so I got I, I got to flag the Mercury retrograde Virgos above everything else. Mercury is your chart ruler. Same for especially Virgo risings. So that's why I'm talking to you right now. Uh, Mercury is your chart ruler and uh, you and Geminis are likely to feel in general Mercury retrogrades the most because Mercury is the planet that is uh, the most connected with, with, with who you are, your vitality, uh, your life direction, and so on. 
Mercury is going to be retrograde from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. Mercury is the ruler of your house of career and of your first house of identity and the physical body. So expect maybe some some delays, some pauses, some some bumps in the road, uh, maybe some some back and forth, some things getting lost in translation, some miscommunications um, from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. Um, when it comes to career matters, especially matters that involve some sort of a creative input, I'd say, especially from the 13th of December until the 23rd of December. Um, it might feel like some important career uh, related talks are being put on hold throughout this uh, throughout this period. Very, very possible. Mercury is going to be retrograde in your fourth house of home from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. This can be a time of miscommunication, disagreements, misunderstandings, and really feeling like your messages are not making their mark. Um, in, in the home environment, in the family environment, uh, maybe it feels like you're not on the same page with, with uh, a parent. Um, especially, I mean, I mean, it could be either parent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. But especially like a very challenging and sensitive day is the 28th of December, maybe also the day before and the day after, when Mercury conjuncts Mars in your fourth house of home. This is prime time for fights, for verbal arguments at home um, with either a parent or uh, a partner or both. If you are fighting with a partner, it could be over home related matters and family matters and living situation matters. Your words could be misconstrued. Um, you could say things really quickly and impulsively and, and um, the other person could even end up crying. Not that it was your intention to make them cry, but you might strike like a very, very sensitive part of them. Slow down before you say something and also slow down before you respond to something on the 20th of December uh, because you might, you might say things that you might later regret, I'd, uh, I'd say. There is also a chance of something breaking in the house um, around the 20th of December, uh, maybe something that isn't even that old, <laughs> unfortunately, and it could be very disappointing for both you and a partner or, or um, generally for all family members and for all people who live with you. And uh, as a result, uh, there is a higher than usual tendency to lash out or to just kind of like become very uh, abrasive in, in, in speech on this, uh, on this day. And generally there is a chance of miscommunication with family, um, especially from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. So slow down, make sure that your, your message has been understood. Make sure that you understood the other person properly, ask questions when in doubt, better safe than, uh, than sorry, as they, as they say. Going back to the beginning of the month, so obviously I've started with the most, well, one of the most challenging aspects uh, of, of, of the month, because I know you like to be prepared, Virgo, so that you can plan ahead. Um, it does feel like you've got a lot of energy to do things around the house, Virgos, this, um, this month, with Mars transiting your house of home. Um, but you might... You might feel like people are not, especially in the home, they're not moving quickly enough. They're not moving fast enough. So you might be better off doing things by yourself. Now, if you do do them quickly and by yourself, um, <laughs> what's the saying? So we have a saying in Romania, but I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to find, to, to, to figure out what the translation is in, in English. So if you're, let's say, cleaning the entire house by, by yourselves, where it goes, because you've got a very particular way of doing it. And I know that's such a cliche, but I have found it to be true. Don't get all resentful when you don't get a helping hand from other family members, just because if you were to get a helping hand from them, uh, maybe you'd be very quick to point out how they are not as proficient or competent at, at doing things your way. So that's, that's just something that I wanted to put out there. Beginning of the month, 2nd of December, Mercury is sexiling Saturn in your seventh house. It feels like this, this could be a really good day to talk with your partner, life partner, uh, especially, but also business partner about either a uh, matter connected with children or a matter connected with creative projects in, uh, in general. This could also feel like a day when, uh, talking to someone else is helping you really define 
what makes you happy and and what it is that you need more of uh, or what it is that you need to do more of in your uh, in your life um also very very good day to ask for career advice from from someone who is more mature i'd uh, i'd say uh, virgos Third of December, Venus squares Pluto. Um, this could be a day when there are some sort of like hidden expenses to something that you, or, or kind of hidden costs to something that you buy and you might end up paying more than you thought you would pay. So do read the fine print, please, 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 please. Fourth of December, Venus enters your um, third house of communication, writing, speaking, short distance travel uh, until the 29th of December. So uh, this could actually be a really enjoyable time when it comes to um, writing a thesis or, or reading a lot uh, or, or working on a presentation. Um, you might also enjoy connecting with, with colleagues, with neighbors and with siblings throughout this, uh, throughout this period. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn. Oh God, I love this. So a relationship, uh, it could be um, a personal relationship, but also a professional relationship gets consolidated. And it feels like you are accomplishing something very significant that you worked hard on together with someone else uh, around this time. And the results please both of you. So kind of like both people in, uh, involved. I like the 8th of December also because Mercury trines Jupiter. This could be a day when you make plans to travel together with a partner. Maybe you physically travel together with a partner. Um, it is a really good day to go out into the world um, and to maybe learn about something new, uh, maybe something that, uh, like a topic that you're very interested in, maybe, I don't know, like history or, or uh, nutrition or something like that. You could enjoy a very uh, beautiful time uh, on this day if you go uh, to a cultural event. So I don't know, it could be a conference, the theater, going to a museum. So really, really enriching and enjoyable event. Same goes for the 18th of December when we've got the same uh, aspect in the sky, Mercury trining Jupiter in the ninth house. Another good day to travel, but this time to a place that maybe you've been to because Mercury is retrograde. It could also be a good time to go back to maybe um, an experience, a place or a setup or to maybe reconnect with someone who has um, broadened your perspective in the past. So someone who, who felt like a, like a guide or a mentor or a teacher of, uh, of some sorts. Um, also a day of very productive conversations, the 18th of, um, of December. Um, with partners, uh, life partners, but also business partners. Um, both the 8th and the 18th are also very good days to agree with your partner on a matter connected with um, children's goals, uh, children's kind of like nutrition, live... I don't think livelihood is the right word. Uh, wellness, health, and well-being in uh, in general, I'd uh, I'd say. And you also seem to have a way with words and to be very inspired in terms of the words that you're using, my dear Virgos, both on the 8th and on the, the 18th. If you need to persuade someone of anything, I would choose either of these days. 10th of December, I think I've mentioned this for, for, for most signs. Um, it is a very kind of like excessive day. Um, Venus is in opposition to Jupiter. There is there is this kind of like energy of more, more, more of something that brings kind of like enjoyment and pleasure and, and uh, at a very kind of like intense, deep, um, deep level. Um, Venus is uh, opposing Jupiter on the third house, ninth house axis. This could be a day when you try to get a lot done or when where you try to cover a lot of ground from an educational perspective or when it comes to writing something. But you might end up at the end of the day looking at everything that you've read and realizing, mm, I don't know if I've understood or if I've gotten the gist of it. So it could feel like you're trying to get a lot covered and done, a lot of ground covered. But if you look back, you might realize actually this has been um, <laughs> a futile <laughs> um, uh, attempt. Uh, to do more than I could have uh, done from from a realistic perspective, let's uh, let's say. Plans connected with traveling could change at the very last minute on this on this day, maybe because of something that has to do with um, with your neighbors, your siblings, or one of your colleagues or in-laws, my dear Virgos, around this uh, around this date. 
12th of December, three days before, three days after, there's a new one in your house of home. Some of you could be moving into a new home. Some of you could be um, welcoming a new family member. Um, some of you could be starting off some sort of a new chapter home-wise and, and, and family-wise. Maybe you're starting to paint um, paint the room for, for um, um, the baby that's going to be born in, in, in 2024. Um, it does feel like there's a new beginning in some shape or form connected with either a creative process connect that, that has something to do with the home. So painting, decorating, renovating, but it could also be a new beginning that involves children in some shape or, uh, or form. Maybe, as I said, there could be like pregnancy on the horizon, but also, also, uh, maybe your child is going to start, I don't know, like attending a new school or something like, uh, something like that. The one thing is that the new moon is in a tense aspect to Neptune. So Neptune brings fog, ideals, illusions, glamour, fantasy, um, and it's not very grounded in reality. So uh, there could be a sense of, of not being very, very clear as to how you're going to go about this new, uh, this new chapter in your, uh, in your life, my dear Virgos. You might not be very clear on the details. Um, it could be a little bit unclear to your partner what their role is here. So you might want to sit down and, and discuss that uh, through with them in, in detail. Uh, there could also be the sense of expecting more than is actually pragmatically possible. And that could result in disappointment, I, I want to say. For a few select people, I am going to put it out there. Um, there is a possibility that uh, that some of you might announce if uh, might might announce the family that you're no longer going to be in a relationship and maybe that you're seeing someone else. That's that's a possibility. It has to be indicated by other factors in the chart, but there there is a sense of maybe also giving up or releasing certain partnerships or or collaborations or relationships around this uh, around this time. Twenty first of December, Venus opposes uh, Uranus in the ninth house. Again, a day of, of plans changing uh, at short notice when it comes to traveling, both long distance or, or or short distance. Even there could be incidents on the road. Uh, there could be cancellations of trains, things like that. So I would recommend having a backup plan and also potentially having travel insurance. Twenty second of December. Uh, Capricorn season starts and the 22nd is actually a day of Mercury Kazemi. So a new Mercury cycle begins. Um, a very, very good day to uh, discuss about important matters um, connected with, with children, romantic love and creative projects. It might feel like there's tremendous clarity, there's agreement, there's, um, there's alignment, and there's a sense of seeing things that you hadn't seen or, for, or fully grasped or understood up until this point. So I'm liking this. You could also have tremendous clarity about where a romantic relationship is headed, Virgos. 25th of December, one of the most romantic days of the, of the month. I mean, hands down, probably the most romantic day. Venus is trining Neptune. Um, it is a great, great day to take your partner out for a date, to go to the movies. I mean, it's Christmas time, so maybe if you don't celebrate Christmas, right? I mean, if you are at home celebrating Christmas, maybe it's a good day to just kind of yeah, relax and chill and and um, escape the 3D reality somehow together with a partner. There could be some really um, soul nourishing and, and soul kind of like healing uh, conversations that are happening. Um, you could feel like um, you're very inspired somehow by your partner and, and uh, the partner could feel the same about, uh, about you, my dear, my dear Virgos. It's a great day to daydream um, and to kind of like maybe discuss about what sort of like ideal future you would have together with, uh, with a partner because obviously everything starts in the mind. We first have to imagine it for it to become a reality. And many times our imaginations are very, very busy with negative things. And then people ask themselves, why is this happening to me? Why, why are these like negative circumstances coming my way? And I know it's a lot easier said than done, but that's because our, our mind, our subconscious is, is constantly kind of like ruminating over worst case scenarios. Um, how about we, 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 channel that energy instead of channeling it on uh bad stuff how about if we channeled it on the best possible 
scenarios that we could experience in our um, in our lives. How about that? I don't know, just an idea. 27th of December, three days before, three days after, full moon in Cancer. Uh, it, this is a beautiful full moon, my dear Virgos. You're probably celebrating with friends. You're probably uh, being very social, um, maybe attending group events. It feels like it's it's a culminating point in terms of having accomplished a big goal um, this, uh, this year. Have a think about what sort of goal was on your horizon. Um, middle of the year, around the 17th of July, because you're, you you will have probably achieved it uh, end of the year. It is a time of enjoyment in a group type of setup. Um, you could also make plans to travel with friends or or actively like be traveling uh, together together with, uh, with them. It feels like you have also overcome maybe some sort of obstacle or difficulty uh, that was getting in the way of, of a long-term goal together with a partner. I am loving this full moon a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot because of the nice aspects of both Jupiter and to um, to Saturn. Um, yeah, yeah, a very, very beautiful end of the end of the year. And last but not least, Venus goes into your house of home. Um, 29th of December until the 23rd of January. Relationships with family members are probably gonna gonna um, enter a very auspicious time. It's a great time to to get together with family members, to welcome family in, into your um, into your home, to travel together with family um, with family members, um, to maybe beautify the home in some um, in some shape or form. Um, and generally, it feels like home is a really really nice place to be after having experienced potentially some some bumpy energies this month with both Mercury retrograde in this part of your chart uh, from the 23rd of December and also with Mars in this part of the chart um, the entire the entire month. So that is uh, that is Virgo. My dear Libras, Libra suns and Libra risings, what does December have in store for you? Well, first and foremost, Mars, planet of action, stamina, motivation, drive and energy and passion. Uh, Mars is going to be transiting your third house of short distance travel, writing, selling, buying. Um, Mars will be in this part of your chart the entire month, which is telling me that you're probably going to have a lot on your plate in terms of maybe meeting with a lot of people, connecting with a lot of people, um, maybe um, submitting, uh, submitting paperwork, uh, making a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, buying, selling, purchasing things. Speaking of buying and selling, Mercury, god of commerce, um, is going to go retrograde, uh, my dear Libras. First, it's gonna it's gonna start the retrograde on the thirteenth of December in your house of home and family, and then it's gonna re-enter Sagittarius in your third house from the twenty third of December, and the retrograde ends on the second of January. So folks, if you ask me, if you want to buy, sell, purchase things, order things, uh, send things, I don't know, um, maybe via courier and, and so on, my recommendation would be, if you can, to get it done before Mercury goes retrograde, if possible, so before the 13th of December. And also, if you can, to be particularly mindful of the period between the last week of December until the 2nd of January, when uh, things could get lost um, or, or, or maybe even damaged during transportation or misplaced uh, packages may not arrive on time, there could be delays. So I would definitely not let, not leave it until the last minute to buy presents, to send out gifts and 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 things like and things like that and generally generally all things um connected with transportation uh buying selling purchasing p paperwork um, they are all ruled by mercury and when mercury is going to be retrograde from the 13th of december until the 2nd of january um, well things might not necessarily go exactly as intended i'd uh, i'd say so if you do have to buy something if you do have to purchase things if you do have to sell things if you do have to fill in i don't know contracts or things like that i would just read things extra 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 carefully to make sure that there aren't any typos to make sure that your name is spelled correctly and so on. There can be some challenges in communication, my dear, uh, my dear Libras, especially so from the 13th of December until the 23rd with family members or um, connected with family related matters. And then uh, from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January with neighbors, colleagues and 
um, cousins, siblings. Um, so these 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 people that are ruled by the third house in um, in astrology. I would just make sure if you are texting them, messaging them, emailing them. If you're I don't know, for example, if you you're calling them over to uh, attend your your I don't know your Christmas dinner. I would just double check that they've got the message. I would just double check that uh, you've understood the reply correctly because yeah, all things communication may not necessarily go as planned when Mercury is retrograde. Last but not least, um, I would not buy things for the house or um, cars uh, or um, anything that is connected with transportation between uh, the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. Uh, why? Because the retrograde is going to be happening in your fourth house of home and in your third house of short distance traveling and transportation. There could be some things that go a little bit south in terms of um, trains, in terms of um, car rides, uh, especially from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. Now, let's, let's put it this way. Mercury retrograde is never a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Most things in life are not a tragedy. Mercury retrograde is likely, if anything, to be more annoying. Uh, Mercury kind of like steps into the energy of the trickster <laughs> uh, during the during the retrograde. So um, if you are planning to, let's say, take the train somewhere to see your family um, for the holidays, for those of you who are celebrating, I would just make sure that you have like a backup plan. That would be my only, only, only um, recommendation. Last but not least, Mercury is also the ruler of your ninth house of foreign lands and foreign countries, uh, visas, um, all any and all connections with with uh, legal institutions and um, also with with judicial entities. During Mercury retrograde, you might feel like matters connected with these aspects of your uh, of your life. So let's say, for instance, Libra, as you're waiting for, I don't know, your passport to arrive, your new passport to arrive, uh, do expect delays, do triple, quadruple check that they haven't sent, I don't know, your passport to the wrong address and, and so on. So pretty much from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. Now, there's also some really good things happening, some nice things happening in December, but I did want to get this out of the out of the out of the way, the Mercury retrograde. Going back to Mars, Mars transiting your third house. Um, with Mars in the third house, I would be careful not to drive too quickly not to speed. And I would be generally careful when it comes to speed, um, both on the transportation front and on the communication front, because uh, speed might potentially, 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 um, yeah, backfire. <laughs> I, I, I want to um, I want to say, especially around the 28th of December, this is probably the day that I that I uh, don't necessarily uh, like that much out of the entire month of, uh, of December. Mercury conjuncts Mars and squares Neptune. So this is a day when whatever you say could be very hurtful to others. Also, um, you might hear that uh, either like a colleague or a sibling or a cousin or maybe even your partner has said something that feels very, very um, painful and very, very hurtful. I would double check before jumping to conclusions, before confronting them, for instance. I would also double check that you've got the message right and also that the message isn't distorted because with Neptune in the mix, sometimes there is a sense of like illusion, confusion and things not being super, super, super clear. Also, especially 20th of December, maybe the, also the day before, the day after, please drive carefully. That's that's my only thing. And um, there is a possibility that there could be things like flooding and 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 and, and things of, of that nature kind of like happening uh, that could interfere with uh, the trips or any of the trips that you have planned. Uh, I would just be extra cautious. So generally when Mars is involved, I always say don't rush. You might be in, 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 in a Speedy Gonzales uh, mood. I, I think that that was the cartoon that we were uh, watching as, as as kids. So you know the uh, the cartoon character that was kind of like zooming zoom, zooming around. Um, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just very old, <laughs> and I remember cartoons that no one remembers. But hey, um, yeah, just take it take it slow. Take it slow when it comes to driving and transportation and being on the on the road in general around the 28th of December. Maybe also the day before or the day after. Now, what else is going on? What else is going on, Libras? So, 
Um, on the 2nd of December, I really like this day, Mercury sextiles Saturn. I like it because it feels like you can use your mind, you can kind of like channel your mental intellectual energy towards solving things, fixing things, um, um, maybe maybe finding solutions to kind of like longer term like problems that needed to be solved at home this could be a really good day to spend time at home and write so if you need to write a thesis for instance if you need to i don't know um, um do your taxes for instance a very 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 good day to do this um third of december venus squares pluto i mean you could find out something about the family about a parent about the past that you didn't necessarily come see coming and maybe it's something that was well maybe it happened or it, it was it was it was there uh within within the family this piece of information for a long time but only at this point do you do you hear news? Do you, do you find out about it? Do you hear about it? And you could feel a little bit disappointed. I don't want to say betrayed, but there could be a sense of, oh, you didn't trust me enough to tell me this or, or something along those something along those lines, I'd, uh, I'd say. 4th of December until the 29th of December, Venus enters your second house of income, Libras. This is beautiful because this means that you are likely to attract more income. Um, I like this because um, essentially if, if you are having talks, for example, um, year-end review with your manager, with your boss, and um, you want to ask for a raise, for instance, you might actually get it. Uh, very, very likely. Um, it does feel like, like you attract money more easily. It could also mean that you're likely to spend money on beautiful things, on gifts, and maybe also on things connected with your with your physical body and appearance. I'm thinking of, for example, uh, I don't know, like clothes, haircut, and so um, and so on. You're feeling particularly generous also with your uh, with your money throughout this uh, throughout this period. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn, uh, a really like a very, very successful, constructive, productive day in terms of um, work related um, relationships uh, and, and connections. Also a day when it feels like you have accomplished something uh, that took a long time to accomplish and, and you're, you're very satisfied with the result. Um, it feels like you're accomplishing something connected with your health. You're seeing some really strong, positive, beneficial results connected with your health, uh, especially if you've been investing more time, more energy, more money, uh, more resources into your health. I absolutely like this. Uh, also a really good day for creative work together with a, uh, a colleague, a collaborator, and maybe even a client at work. Use this energy. 8th of December, Mercury trines Jupiter. Oh, I love this. I love this. It feels like uh, you're, you're having some really um, enjoyable, really... Um, I was about to say jovial uh, times together with uh, together with family members, uh, together with maybe um, um, siblings, uh, possibly parents. It feels like I almost see this day as a day of like celebrating with the family around the the, the dinner table and just kind of like having these super like exciting and and oh I apologize. Um, Mercury retrograde, not yet, but we're getting there. So uh, on the 8th of December, I almost kind of like picture this um, family dinner um, and, and you're having kind of like very, very um, energizing conversations. People are having fun. People are, are having a good, uh, a good time. Um, it also feels like you're working on this day and accomplishing something together with a family member. Uh, maybe something that required um, focus, concentration, and uh, I'm gonna say maybe some sort of like craftiness, um, something along those, something along those lines. Um, I'm also liking the 18th of December, which is very similar in terms of energy. Mercury is gonna try and Jupiter again on the 18th of December. Good news connected with the family, uh, really productive conversations with the family, making plans for the future together with the family, maybe even making plans to travel, uh, really enjoying the company of family, also maybe uh, giving and receiving gifts. Good news also connected with um, maybe uh, loans, investments, mortgages, and, and, and things like that. Um, and I am seeing in a way that you're getting closer to, to your goals somehow, my dear Libras, when it comes to home and family and the the conversations the communications um that are that are kind of like on your on your radar around both the 8th and the the 18th um 
they they really seem to highlight these these positive developments on the home and family front. 12th of December, we've got a new moon in Sagittarius. It's active three days before, three days after. It's a new moon in your third house. So a new beginning in terms of, I'm going to say maybe uh, classes, courses, maybe starting to learn something new. It could also be a new beginning for those of you who have siblings, um, connected with your sibling in some shape or form. Maybe your sibling is letting you know that, I don't know, they're going to start a new job or, or they're going to um, uh, maybe... Um, uh, start working out or start utilizing their time in a different uh, in a different way. Um, I don't necessarily like the fact that the new moon is in a tense aspect to Neptune. This could be a day when you kind of like the new moon could bring like a time for you to, to collaborate maybe with new people, new clients at work. But it does feel like you you're not really, really sure how to communicate with these people or you're not very sure on the exact parameters of the collaboration, which is where I would uh, double check. I would double check that you've got all the facts, that you've got all the details. And I would not just kind of like it's a very jovial new moon because it's happening in Sagittarius. So sometimes uh, uh, Sagittarius is much more concerned. Well, actually, most of the times it's much more concerned with the big picture rather than the details. But then the details come and kind of like eat at the uh, at the at the joy. So do uh, get very clear on what it is that you're signing up for work wise. Uh, I am liking the fact that Jupiter is trining Mercury. So it could be that uh, you're 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 becoming aware of the fact that you're maybe going to use a new tool or start learning something new that will be of use and of service to the people that you, um, well, that you serve um, in your in your work. Mercury retrograde starts 13th of December. We've talked about that. Um, I am going to flag the 21st of December, Libra, as Venus is going to oppose Uranus. Uh, this could be a day of unexpected um, expenses or or of of some sort of like shakeup on your financial front. Maybe something that you didn't see coming. Maybe something costs a lot more than you thought it would cost. And it, it might rattle a bit some of the plans that you had made from a financial perspective. This could also be a day when um, I'm going to say some of you and and... This generally, this doesn't happen in a, in, in a vacuum. So this aspect in itself is not sufficient for something like this to happen. But some of you might experience some sort of a uh, cutting ties with, with, with a connection, with a partner, uh, maybe with someone who you uh, used to collaborate on the financial front. Uh, it could be you deciding to cut ties, for instance, with, with an advisor, an accountant in, in some shape or form. But it does feel like quite a radical quite a radical breakup, I want to say. Then the sun uh, enters your house of home, 22nd of December, uh, Capricorn season starts. Um, and the 22nd of December is actually the day of Mercury uh, Kazemi. So the sun conjunct, uh, the sun conjunct Mercury. So a new Mercury cycle begins. A very good day to have long term conversations um, with um, family and maybe also the partner, loved ones about Plans for the future connected with home life, family life, and and living situation. If you um, if you ask if you ask me, twenty fifth of December, a very beautiful day. Christmas is very beautiful this year. Venus is trining Neptune, a very romantic day, a very relaxing day, a day of really feeling like you can catch your breath uh, after after a lot of hard work. It's almost like, and I know I know it's not necessarily the healthiest way of, of, of thinking about it, um, but I'm I'm definitely I find myself being guilty of this uh, many times. It's almost like you feel really good, as if you have earned your rest, as if you have earned the relaxation. It's like ah yes, I've worked really hard, I've accomplished my goals, da 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 da, and now I can really kind of like enjoy it because you do seem to enjoy it. Just as an FYI. 27th of December, we've got a full moon, one of my favorite full moons of the year, a full moon activating um, the Cancer Capricorn axis, uh, some sort of like big success or accomplishment, probably on the career side, I want to, I want to say it does feel so the new the, the full moon, my apologies is in a nice aspect to um, Jupiter, it feels like there's there's some sort of like, good luck, protection, auspicious um, outcome, like really beneficial, positive outcome connected with both your career, especially your career, but also possibly with your public status with your status in the world. So it looks like you're being admired in the world, you're being appreciated, it feels like the world really, really um, appreciates it's what you're bringing out there to um, to the table. Uh, this new moon, my apologies, this full moon could also bring with it uh, some sort of um, of, a, of a feeling of success, um, 
on the parental side. So maybe you hear news of a parent, I don't know, um, accomplishing one of their goals. Um, it, it feels like it's a good time for your parents. It's a good time all around. I mean, I like it. I like it on the family side of things. I like it on the career side of things. It's a time for celebration. It's a time when some of you could also step up or you could hear news of stepping up uh, professionally, but also together with the family, it feels like you're you're just kind of in this, in this um, bubble of feeling very, feeling some somewhat protected and and lucky i i want to say and 29th of december um venus is going to go into sagittarius in your third house um you're probably going to really enjoy until the 23rd of january um communicating with others uh maybe connecting with people uh writing learning um i i, w I would say that you're likely to enjoy a lot day to day maybe encounters if you if you ask uh, if you ask me so that is that is Libra. My lovely Scorpio, Scorpio suns and Scorpio risings. What does December have in store for you? Well, first and foremost, Scorpios, Mars is going to be in your house of income in your second house uh, the entire month. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that you might be very quick to spend your money. You might be very quick to, as I say, get rid of your money. However, it also tells us that you might be very quick to go after your um, targets and goals from a financial perspective. So you seem to be very driven, very motivated. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let let me let me bring bring home that cash. Let me bring home the the. What, what do they say? The bacon, I think. Um, so for instance, if you're having, I don't know, um, significant conversations with your boss, or um, if you are thinking, you know what, I think I can make more money in a different, in a different job, in a different role, in a different company. You might be very driven, my dear Scorpios, this month to go out there and see what is out there for you. I mean, generally, generally, um, Scorpios, until the beginning of 2025, the North Node is transiting your, your sixth house of day-to-day -day work, which is likely to bring some sort of like novelty, new developments, uh, new energy in your house of day-to-day -day work, which can also mean new job or new work environment. Mercury, so this is this is probably one of the most significant transits of the of the month, uh, my dear Scorpios. Mercury is going to go retrograde, thirteenth of December until the second of January. Initially, it's going to be retrograde in your third house of communication, short distance travel, from the thirteenth until the twenty third. This is where things could go a little bit south. Um, they they might not. Uh, play out as planned when it comes to traveling, especially short distance traveling. So if you're planning to take the train somewhere, hop on a bus, expect from the 13th, especially until the 23rd, uh, maybe delays, cancellations, or just kind of like things changing without you necessarily foreseeing this. Mercury is also the ruler of your 11th house. So do expect maybe some of the plans that you have made um, throughout the entire period of Mercury retrograde with your friends do expect some of these plans to maybe not necessarily go, not necessarily unfold exactly as you had envisaged them, my um, my lovely Scorpios. I'd say a degree of flexibility. <laughs> a degree of flexibility is very, very, very likely to help, especially when it comes to um, social plans, social events, social uh, social occasions. I would definitely not buy cars uh, or. Um, be in a rush to buy and sell things throughout the entire duration of the Mercury retrograde, but especially between the 13th uh, until the 23rd. Now, Mercury um, kind of like hovers back into, retraces its steps back into Sagittarius in your second house of income from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January. This is where I would keep a very close eye on how much you're charged, on not being charged incorrectly. You might get charged incorrectly sometimes, and it could be a genuine mistake. Um, but I would keep a very close eye on, what is it, invoices, receipts, when you pay the bill at the restaurant, uh, when you're, I don't know, placing an order. Uh, if you are placing orders, by the way, and to like get stuff delivered, um, yeah, if you ask me, I would make sure to purchase these things, if you can, if it is at all possible, before Mercury goes retrograde on the 13th, if you cannot help it, then of course, I would just kind of like ensure that you've written down the right address, uh, that you, um, 
I don't know, keep track of, of, of the parcel and, and things like that, because during the retrograde, things could get a little bit lost in, in, in transportation. Going back, but going back to the financial side of things, I would make, um, I would make sure that, um, also your, your kind of like bank statements are in good place and in good order, especially from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, when the retrograde is happening in your house of income. Now, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting it, I'm just putting it out there. What else is going on in December? So 2nd of December, really nice day. It does look like you are very productive when it comes to utilizing your mind for um, maybe some sort of a creative project. It also feels like um, maybe the communication with children, especially for those of you who have children, is improving after some sort of like significant effort. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. Now, here is where you could find out something about a partner. Um, it could be a business partner. It could be a life partner that you didn't necessarily see coming. Um, it could feel like you have unraveled some sort of secret. Is it likely to rattle you a little bit? It could. It could. But I would not jump to conclusions and maybe think of the worst. <laughs> do you ever do that, Scorpios? This is me being sarcastic. But I love you. I love I love Scorpios. I, I love that the, the no nonsense energy. But let's face it. Sometimes you might jump to the to the worst of conclusions be, before um, maybe taking a taking a moment to consider things. Yeah, just before you kind of like confront them, I would sit down and and kind of like yeah, just have a heart to far. <laughs> a heart to heart face to face if possible conversation so that you can also kind of like read their their nonverbal language if possible 4th of december until the 29th venus enters your first house you're going to love this you're going to love this uh scorpios just because um you're probably going to feel extra magnetic extra sexy extra admired um extra but in all of the good uh, in all the good ways it's it's really a good time for you to give yourself uh, a lot of love to uh, to treat yourselves to buy nice things for yourselves maybe also to get like a haircut or to kind of like do something nice from like a, an appearance and an aesthetic perspective um, just because Venus rules all of these uh, all of these things it's also a good time for you to date especially if you're if you're single you might feel like you are magnetic. I mean, you're generally quite magnetic, but extra magnetic from a romantic perspective throughout this, uh, this period. So pretty much for most of December, you're gonna like this. You're really, really, really gonna like this, uh, my dear, uh, my dear Scorpios. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn. It feels like a relationship is consolidating. Um, and it also feels like you could really see yourselves, especially for those of you who are already in a relationship, you could really see yourselves building something long lasting and tangible with a partner. It could be something connected with children. It could be something connected with home life, family life, um, real estate, property, and things like that. The relationship with a family member seems to be improving and, and solidifying. The same thing goes for, I mean, obviously it's also a family member. Same thing goes for a relationship with your kids. For those of you who have uh, who have kids, you seem to be very proud of your children on this on this day. Eighth of December and the eighteenth of December are two of my favorite days. Uh, I mean, I really like the fifth of December as well, but the eighth and the eighteenth are two of my favorite days because Mercury trines Jupiter in your house of relationships. So this could be a day when um, you hear some really good news. I mean, both of these days uh, could be days when you hear some really good news connected with your partner. Um, maybe your partner has uh, something to share about, I don't know, getting a raise at work or, or kind of like having some sort of personal uh, win. Conversations with partners really go the way that you want them to go. You seem to be very excited to be making plans for the future. Also, these are really good days for, um, financial agreements. Um, and on the 18th of December, maybe, of course, because Mercury is retrograde, um, maybe you could apply this to an agreement that has already been like some, somewhat in, 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 in discussion or uh, somewhat on your radar. So not necessarily a new one, but essentially if you want to get more clients, if you want to get someone to sign up for like a, one of your services, if you, if you want to uh, persuade someone to jump on board uh, from a professional perspective, I like both the eighth and the, um, 18th. Whatever it is that you're presenting to others in terms of communication, you're very persuasive. They get it. You seem to really, really hit the nail on um, on the head, I'd, I'd say. They can also be quite romantic days. I am going to put it out there. Just because for you, my dear... Um, 
my dear Scorpios, Jupiter is also the ruler of your fifth house of romance. So if you're thinking of, of I don't know, saying yes to a date or, or taking your partner out for a date, why not? We don't have to always be uh, the ones waiting for things to happen. We can also initiate things. I like both the 8th and the 18th. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 10th of December could be a little bit of a day of excess. Venus in opposition to Jupiter. Uh, I mean, a little bit of excess maybe in terms of, of, of um, maybe having having a good time, but too, maybe, is there such a thing as too much of a good time? I think there is. Too much of a good time together with, with uh, a partner, um, maybe excess in terms of like food, fun, things like, things like that. This could also be a day, however, when it feels like you're not really aligned. You, you don't necessarily see eye to eye with, um, with a partner, either when it comes to a financial matter or a matter connected with children. It feels like your values are not aligned with their beliefs or, or something along those lines. And you kind of like need to make a compromise, both of you. New moon, new moon in Sagittarius, uh, 12th of December, new beginning for you financially, my dear Scorpios. It could bring a new source of income. Um, it could also bring a new maybe collaborator. Why? Because the ruler of the new moon. So a collaborator on the financial front, maybe a business partner or, or someone who you're willing to pay uh, to help you in some shape or form in a practical way. Um, Jupiter, the ruler of the new moon is in your seventh house in your seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and uh, collaborations. This could also be a day when you, uh, well, the new moon in itself, but also the, the, the days before, the days after. Um, it could be a time when you decide to spend your money in a different way, maybe to allocate some of your money to um, the people who can support you um, in terms of Achieving a much more fulfilling life, I want to say. Careful because the new one is in a square to Neptune. So if you're signing up for something financially around this time, uh, I would double, triple, quadruple check the details and the fine print because there could be some clauses that you're not immediately aware of that might have you further down the line spending more than you intended. 21st of December, Venus is opposing Uranus. It feels like you really want to cut someone out of your life on this day, my dear Scorpios. It could be someone that just feels very stubborn. It could be someone that just feels like, yeah, they're not, they're not getting it. They're not seeing, they're not seeing things the way that you're seeing them. <laughs> and it also feels like someone is not appreciating you fully. So whoever needs to be cut out, I mean, sometimes people come, people go out of our lives. It's okay. It happens. 22nd of December, uh, Capricorn season starts, and uh, this is actually the day of a Mercury Kazemi. So if there was ever a good day during the Mercury retrograde from the 13th of, uh, of December until the 2nd of January to maybe uh, purchase something, uh, sign up for something, start a class, a course, or maybe um, just kind of like travel somewhere, the 22nd of December is it with Mercury uh, Kazemi. 25th of December, once again, one of my favorite days. There's a lot of good days in, in December. I, I, I mean, a lot of pleasant days, harmonious days. Um, 25th of December is one of my favorites uh, with Venus trining Neptune. Oh gosh, so beautiful, so enjoyable, so fun, so relaxing, um, so romantic. Um, it is a very, very, very romantic day. I'm gonna put it out there. If you're not in a relationship, maybe you might wanna just consider having fun. <laughs> like. Just have fun. It's actually a day when you, you might have fun without actually doing anything or planning anything. It might feel like you're, you're just kind of like very loved and you're very appreciated and you're feeling very relaxed and fun might find you, um, uh, romance might find you. I like it in all sorts of ways. 27th of December is a really, really nicely aspected full moon. The year ends beautifully. Um, Full moon activating your, your third house, ninth house axis, the axis of traveling, education. Um, this full moon is potentially likely to see you traveling or making plans to travel. It could also bring with it some sort of good news um, connected with maybe like a, a court of law or a legal matter uh, or something connected with foreign lands and foreign countries or, or good news connected with academia. Maybe you're finalizing some sort of academic chapter. And it seems to be like a time when you could be celebrating very, very likely and you're getting some really, really, really positive feedback, I'd, uh, I'd say. The full one is nicely aspected to Jupiter. It's nicely aspected to Saturn. For those of you who have kids, I know not everyone has them. <laughs> 
A lot of you are very quick to tell me in the comments, no, 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 we don't have children. I'm like, yeah, but some people do. <laughs> Sorry, the, the sarcasm is oozing today. Um, for those of you who have kids, uh, this might this this uh, full moon might actually bring some some really good news, some sort of success uh, connected with your children's education. I'd uh, I'd say, twenty eighth of December, not my favorite day. Uh, Mercury conjunct Mars squares Neptune. Um, there could be some sort of a, some sort of like fights or quarrels uh, with a loved one or um, with someone who you're very kind of like emotionally emotionally attached, uh, attached to. You could also be very hurt, uh, very hurtful towards someone's feelings without intending to. So you could say something, you could be like blurting out something. And we know that you don't like to sugarcoat things, but you might say something that really comes across as very hurtful. So very careful because it could be hurtful to someone that you love. It probably, I, I, I mean, I know, I know it's not your intention, but uh, it is. It is. Uh, it is a high chance that something like this could happen. 29th of December until the 23rd of January, Venus goes into your second house of income, so it could feel quite easy and and very enjoyable for you to attract money, but also to spend uh, to spend money. I I I want to say, and people seem to be, especially if you're working with people one to one in a professional environment, people seem to be very eager to give you their money, not for nothing, but in exchange for your services and talents. And that is Scorpio. My dear Sagittarius, Sagittarius suns, and especially Sagittarius risings, because you folks know me, I, I always flag that. These horoscopes, these general horoscopes are built with the rising sign in mind above everything else. Folks, what does December look like for you? Well, first and foremost, I do wanna flag this. Mars is going to be transiting your first house of um, identity, the physical body, new beginnings, the entire month. That tells us that you might feel very energized. You might feel like super, super like active. Um, you might feel like there's a lot that you want to do fast, like really, really quickly, a lot that you want to get off your plate really quickly. However, my recommendation would be to not rush to not uh, throw yourself uh, yourselves into things without first kind of like taking taking a little bit of a step back and and uh, and maybe considering is this the best course of action could I maybe slow down a little bit is there anything that I'm missing because you might miss some of the details some of the fine print I I want to say you are very ambitious and very assertive and very motivated the entire month, which are all great qualities. You do seem to have um, an excess of, I mean, they're all great qualities, according to me. <laughs> if you ask someone else, they might say something else. It does look like you've got a lot of physical energy. So it would be a good idea to move your body in order to channel some of that, uh, some of that physical energy so that you don't get angry because you might have a little bit of a shorter fuse this month than you normally have, especially around the 28th of December when Mercury conjuncts Mars and squares Neptune. Be very careful, my lovely Sagittarians, what you say, because you could really, 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 um, hurt someone's feelings. Uh, it could all kind of, uh, if you speak without thinking and if you speak too fast or if you blurt out things, it could all end up with with quite a bit of pain, especially for a family member. And it, it might even lead to, I don't know, um, ruining like a family dinner or, or something like uh, or something like that. On the other hand, you might also feel very motivated to just speak your truth and say kind of like enough is enough um, when it comes to a home situation or a family related situation or maybe the relationship with with a family member. You might feel like you can no longer um, um, you can no longer keep things to yourself. You can no longer pretend like everything is fine. It can be a very argumentative day, the 28th of December, potentially maybe also the day before or the day after, but especially the 28th. So be just be careful, especially when it comes to words and what you choose to say or not. <clears throat> well, if anything, you, you might say more than you should on this uh, on this day, my dear Sagittarians. Now, Mercury, Mercury is going to be retrograde for, for, for quite a bit of the month for for more than half of um, December, 
what's going on. So Mercury is going to be retrograde uh, from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. From the 13th until uh, the 23rd, uh, it's going to be retrograde in your second house of income. That tells us be careful because um, you might be charged incorrectly. Pay attention to your bank statements. Pay attention to your bank accounts. Um, pay attention to what you spend your money on. Um, also, if you're buying things, uh, I, I would be, and especially if you're buying things for others, I would just kind of like um, really take the time maybe to consider whether they're going to be excited or whether they're going to be able to use the things that you buy for them or not really. I'd, uh, I'd say with Mercury retrograde, Mercury being also the ruler of your seventh house of relationships, mm, you might be very quick to spend your money on things that are not necessarily the best choice for others. I'm thinking of gifts and things like um, and things like that. Make sure if you can to get like the to keep the receipt so that you can return them or to even like gift them the receipt if they need to to return them. Um, you might experience some delays and some some uh, issues maybe with paperwork. It's possible uh, with paperwork from the 13th until the 23rd financially or maybe Let's say your boss had told you, listen, you're going to get a raise, but then they say, nah, not immediately. It's going to, it's going to come into full effect next month, which would be in 2024, which is next year. So you might feel like you're experiencing some delays in terms of getting paid properly. Then from the 23rd of December until um, the 2nd of January, Mercury is going to be retrograde in your first house. You might have doubts. You might have a lot of doubts about your relationships. Uh, you might have a lot of doubts about where you're going career wise. Um, you might second guess yourselves, my dear Sagittarians, but you might also, also feel inspired to maybe reconnect, to reconnect with old clients, to reconnect with old bosses, to reconnect with people from the past, uh, to reconnect with old partners. And that could be a very good use. Uh, that could be actually like probably the best uses of the Mercury retrograde, um, energy. Careful when Mercury retrograde is in your first house, because people might not necessarily understand exactly what you're trying to send across. So your messages might end up being distorted uh, or or um, land in the wrong way. So I would choose words carefully, very carefully, both in terms of interactions with others one to one, uh, as well as in in a professional environment, because Mercury is also the ruler of your 10th house of career. So careful what you say, don't rush into speaking because it can backfire or it can be misinterpreted. Beginning of the month. Okay, what's going on? So, I like the 2nd of December when Mercury sextiles Saturn. It feels like you're doing some sort of like hard intellectual work at, at home and getting stuff done. For instance, I don't know, like uh, getting the remortgage um, paperwork uh, like com filled in and, and completed or uh, having some some uh, long-term conversations or conversations about long-term uh, matters with a family member and really feeling like you're on the same uh, on the same page especially conversations that involve money um third of december venus squares pluto hmm i don't really like this because you might hear something about a friend um that uh, you didn't see coming that could potentially shake up a bit the image or the impression, <laughs> same thing pretty much, uh, that you had of this person. There's also a possibility that a friend could be going through like some sort of difficult time around this day, um, especially from a financial um, perspective. And, and it could be something that you hear of, but maybe it's not necessarily, you hear about it around the 3rd of December, but it's not necessarily a new thing. Maybe it's been ongoing in their life for quite some time, but now you, you kind of like, you're aware of it. Um, you could feel maybe a little bit disappointed because potentially this person didn't trust you with this, uh, with this uh, matter, with this secret, I wanna, um, I wanna say. 4th of December until the 29th. Venus enters your 12th house. I mean, this is a great time to rest, to relax, to get away, especially with a romantic partner, to get away from the uh, from the world, to maybe take a few days off. If you can take some time off, my recommendation would be to do it, my lovely Sagittarians, this month, especially at some point between the 4th until the 29th. 
I like the 5th of December because Venus trines Saturn. It feels like you're clearing out a lot from the home um, and it makes the home um, a place that is much more um, enjoyable, much more relaxing. Um, I would also say that this is a time when a situation is fixed, a situation um, maybe uh, concerning the health of a family member is fixed or you feel like you can finally kind of like relax properly because you no longer need to uh, worry about this, um, about this situation. Uh, dear Sagittarians. It's also a day of really getting a lot done with your partner at home, especially if you are in a relationship, I, I, I want to um, I wanna say, but also maybe getting a lot of help when it comes to getting stuff done at home in general. So if you do need help, I don't know, to clear out your shed, for example, ask for help because you're probably going to get it. Friends can also be quite helpful, so don't don't hesitate to reach uh, to reach out to them. Eighth of December and the eighteenth are two of my favorite days. Uh, Mercury is going to try in Jupiter. Um, good news connected with finances on both days. Um, whatever it is that you need to get done uh, regarding your financial sector, regarding your financial situation. I would do it either on the 8th or on the 18th. On the 18th, Mercury is going to be retrograde. So maybe if it's something that was already on your radar, maybe if you wanted to have that big conversation with your boss to like ask for, I don't know, like more responsibility and therefore a raise. Um, if, it's ha if it has been on your radar, if it has been something that you thought of or that you initiated a while ago, um, it's it could be a good idea to, to go ahead with it during the Mercury retrograde. If it's a new thing, I wouldn't do it during the Mercury retrograde. Um, really, really um, good days, both the 8th and the 18th. Uh, when it comes to feeling hopeful and, and, and getting good news and good results um, connected with your health, especially if you've been investing a lot of time, energy and money into your, uh, into your health. Both of these days are good days to uh, maybe uh, consider like uh, discussing with, with the doctor and, and getting like medical advice. It feels like whatever, whatever information you're getting, it is incredibly helpful, I'd, uh, I'd say. Also very good days to present something at work, um, like, like a presentation or, or something where you've compiled concrete data, concrete numbers uh, together. 12th of December, active three days before, three days after, we're going to have a new moon, so a new beginning in your first house of identity and the physical body. So you might feel like you're stepping into a new chapter of self-development, my dear uh, Sagittarians. It could feel like you're, you're stepping into a new chapter in terms of your relationship with your bodies, your relationship with yourselves. It could feel like you're you're getting a little bit of a personal reset, I want to I wanna say, especially a personal reset that is somehow connected with either your health or your work. Uh, it could feel like this, this new moon brings a new beginning either health-wise or work-wise, a new beginning that you're very excited about. You're very excited because you believe in it. Uh, you're very excited because if, it, if it's connected with work, because it's probably going to make you some significant amounts of money. So you, you see to be um, really looking forward to the um, uptick in your uh, in your finances. You could also be very excited because it feels like you're going to be developing a new skill. You're going to be learning uh, something on the practical side of things that uh, that will translate into uh, becoming better at at uh, at some sort of a new skill. What I don't like about this new moon is the square to Neptune. So whatever whatever new beginning you're experiencing on a personal level. I would sit down with family. I would sit down with family members. I would maybe talk to family members because one of them could be suffering. Uh, there's also a chance that this new beginning could take you from home, could take you away from home a little bit more. And there is a feeling of like, mm, I, I, I don't know exactly what to make of it. I don't know exactly how to feel about it. Uh, there could also be a sense of not knowing exactly how much you're going to be taken away from home, how much time you're going to spend away from, from, from the family. So if you are starting a new job, for instance, it might be worth asking. It might be worth clarifying things. 21st of December, some sort of disruption in terms of relationships at work. Um, maybe maybe you feel very like unexpectedly disappointed with, with a coworker. Maybe there's some sort of like sudden news connected with a team member, uh, like a colleague. Maybe someone leaves very suddenly. 22nd of December, um, 
Capricorn season starts. Uh, Capricorn season for you puts the spotlight on your money quite a bit, uh, Sagittarians. So a lot of focus on your financial situation. And this could also be a good day to sign some sort of a um, contract that involves a, a financial agreement. Why? Because Mercury is going to be Cassini, especially a contract that has been the in the works that has been somewhere kind of like brewing to put it this way, in the background with, with Mercury being retrograde. 25th of December, a very relaxing day and also potentially a very romantic day in the in the privacy of your own uh, of your own home. It does feel like you can really relax, sleep, rest, and just enjoy the company of loved ones. The full moon on the 27th of December, active also three days before, three days after, seems to be bringing with it good news connected with your finances. So you're either getting paid, you might be also paying off debt, you could be feeling very positive and optimistic about paying off debt. Um, you could also hear news about a bonus and good news about investments. It feels like finally the, 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 the weight and the... The amount of patience that you've had in terms of investments is paying um, is paying off. Your partner, if you are in a relationship, could also have some really good news connected with their financial situation. They could treat you to something nice, maybe because they've gotten a raise. Um, it does feel like you are clearing out some uh, some sort of like debt, taxes, expenses, and it feels. Boy, does it feel good. It feels like a great achievement, I want to say. And it also feels like the end of a crisis. I'm going to say, like, especially something at a, at a mental, emotional, and psychological level um, that, that was somewhat linked with your work or with your health or a combination of both. So you've got really significant reasons to celebrate the end of the year, my dear Sagittarians. 28th of December, I did flag that this could be a little bit of a harsh day in terms of uh, verbal conflicts. And 29th of December until the last week of January, Venus, um, one of the two benefic planets, enters your first house. You're feeling very attractive, magnetic, you're loving yourselves. For those of you who are single, it could be a great time to go out to date people uh, because um, you are you're extra kind of like magnetic and 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 um, really like feeling yourself, I, I want to say, and feeling good about yourself, about your body. Uh, it could be a really good time to um, invest in your uh, aesthetics, looks, beauty with Venus on your side. So I'm really, really liking it. My dear Capricorns, Capricorn suns and Capricorn risings, what does December look like for you? What does the last month of 2023 look like for you, Capricorns? Well, I do have to flag, first and foremost, two important transits. Mars transiting Sagittarius in your 12th house and um, Mercury. What's going on with Mercury? Mercury is going to go retrograde. <laughs> So uh, it's also going to activate your 12th house and your first house of, of identity and, and uh, personality and new beginnings and the physical body. So with Mars in the 12th house, Mars for you um, Capricorns is the ruler of your house of home and of your house of friends. It really feels like some things are happening behind the scenes uh, the entire month, either at home or in your circle of friends or both possibly both. Um, it feels like there, there's some sort of like moves, moving and shaking going on, um, that, uh, might, that might make you feel a bit left out. That might even make you feel angry. I want to, I want to say a lot of action behind the scenes. Now, some of this action could be initiated by you, uh, Capricorns. Some of this could also be initiated by someone else, like a parent, a partner, a friend, and uh, especially around the 28th of December, maybe also the day before the day after, you could have like a massive argument because you find out something that was going on behind your back. And I dare say that the possibility for, for verbal arguments, for conflicts, for, for some sort of an explosion on this front, um, verbally speaking, is very, 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 very likely, I, I want to um, I wanna say. Um, you could have a significant fight that leaves you both um, hurt uh, with a parent or with a friend around this, around this time. This is also a time when I would really be careful when it comes to driving, when it comes to being on the road. There could be some sort of disappointment, uh, maybe because you're not making uh, your destination on time. Uh, maybe there is some sort of disappointment because like something's happening on the road and um, whatever you try to do, you're somehow kind of like powerless in the face of it. So let's say you want to get somewhere 
and there's like floods or something like that. You might be sorely disappointed. Um, but I don't believe there's a lot that you can do, especially if you want to travel to see family. I would avoid the 28th. I would even avoid the day before and the day after, but especially, especially Capricorns, I would avoid the 28th. I am going to, I am going to put it, uh, I'm going to put it out there. Now with Mars in the 12th house, you might not be able to sleep that much. Uh, Mars in the 12th house is notorious for giving people a little bit of uh, insomnia, but it does feel like you can put a lot of energy into matters connected with, with your home and with your goals for the future in a behind the scenes way. So the way that I would use this is just kind of like get away from the world, my dear Capricorns, and ask yourselves, okay, um, what is it that you truly believe, uh, is, is kind of like meaningful and significant and important on the family front, on the home front, and on the friendship front. And how can you align your actions with that? That's how I would use this uh, this energy. I would also utilizing I would also utilize it by putting energy into matters of a spiritual uh, nature, such as meditating, for for example, or uh, maybe um, learning more about a spiritual tradition, for for instance. 2nd of December, Mercury, sextile Saturn. It feels like this is a day to sign contracts, to uh, finalize like a presentation, to finalize some sort of a long-term um, writing project or a project that involved your education. And it, you do seem to finalize it very, very successfully, I, I want to say. It could also be a day of, of uh, finalizing some sort of process of learning. And you seem to be very proud of yourselves, Capricorns, and you have all the reasons in the world to be proud of yourselves because you, you've you worked hard to get here. It, it's not something that was kind of like just handed out to you. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. I feel like you might want to hide something from the outside uh, from the outside world, maybe from your boss. Um, and um, it could feel quite hard to hide this aspect uh, about yourself, but it might feel like the right thing to, <laughs> like the right thing to do. Um, you could also feel in private, a little bit frustrated and a little bit maybe betrayed with a figure of authority, I want to say, on this uh, on this day. Now, why do I say in private? Because you might not reveal to this figure of authority, to your boss, for instance, that you feel betrayed by them, but you might just kind of like realize, okay, I see you now and I know who I'm dealing with. <laughs> Uh, 4th of December until the 29th, Venus enters your 11th house of friends. Uh, this is a great time to get together with friends, to enjoy social activities, to enjoy social outings, um, to enjoy um, activities that involve a community and this sort of like element of socialization. So it's a good time for um, group type of events. 5th of December, Venus trines Saturn, and it feels like a very productive day in collaboration with a group of people. Um, it also feels like you're forging some significant relationships with a community or with a group of people, um, and, and they're on your, on your side, and you can really benefit from these relationships. You might also help a friend, or you might receive help from a friend in a very concrete, practical way, and everyone wins, in a way. If you ask me, everyone's satisfied. 8th of December and the 18th are two of my favorite days. On the 8th of December and the 18th, Mercury trines Jupiter. Uh, really enjoyable conversations with romantic partners, uh, really productive conversations also with romantic partners, really productive days in terms of creative projects, especially creative projects that involve the mind, communication, writing, speaking, also days of very, very uh, productive and constructive conversations that make you feel really excited about the future. Um, when it comes to the area of children, you could also really just get along very, very well and feel like you're, you're having such a positive impact on your children on these, uh, on these two, um, on these two days. I would also flag the fact that you seem to be really enjoying on these days tapping into your creativity when it comes to work. And it shows. It shows like the work that you do is fantastic. It's very appreciated. And you seem to get a kick out of uh, out of it. I'm liking it. These are also two days, two really good days for dates. I mean, another good day to go out, out on a date is the 25th of December. But I don't know if anyone's going to be 
Christmas time. I mean, if you're not celebrating Christmas, then uh, it could actually be a really, really good day to go to go out and to connect with uh, a potential romantic partner or to just go out, go out on a date with your existing partner. Because like, why not? Uh, the, uh, the, the flame of like passion needs to be uh, nourished and, and sustained. Otherwise, it's just gonna die. <laughs> a slow death, but die nevertheless. 10th of December can be a day of excess, especially when it comes to having too much fun with friends. I mean, there could be too much drinking, too much eating, too much of a good time, and you might wake up the next day and regret it. Possibly. I mean, very likely if you ask, if you ask me. 12th of December, active also three days before, three days after it, there's a new one in your 12th house. Uh, some sort of a new beginning, uh, you're, you're kicking off a new chapter when it comes to either your mental health or um, when it comes to you kind of like starting to put energy into something behind the scenes that involves creativity, creative self-expression, your passions, your hobbies, but also maybe that involves children, I want to say. This new moon can also bring a new beginning romantically, but I am thinking there's something quite... Um, that you want to keep at least quite confidential about this like a uh, romantic lia liaison. Um, this could also be a time when you uh, kick off um, a chapter from a spiritual perspective. Um, something that feels very enjoyable and exciting and something that seems to like teach you a lot about your, your, your blind spots. What I don't like about this new moon is the fact that it is squaring P um, Neptune and Pisces. Uh, you might feel like you can't really talk about this new beginning on a, on a mental health level, on an emotional level, on a romantic level. Um, because if you do talk about it, it might, uh, it might land the wrong way or it might be misunderstood. I want to say the other thing is I would be quite realistic about the expectations that you've got from this new beginning because there could be quite a bit of like illusion and and like glamour and fantasy fantasy being the keyword uh around it and you know the thing with fantasy is that it's great to have them but <laughs> reality sometimes really 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 falls short so it is a very quick way to disappointment so i'm not saying don't get your hopes up high but i'm also saying be discerning um when it comes to what is reality and what is fantasy. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 21st of December, you might be unexpectedly kind of like surprised, not in a, not in a, not in a great way, but maybe in quite a disruptive way by a friend. You might also decide to like cut ties with a friend or a friend might cancel on you at the very, very last minute. This could also be a day when you decide to become less involved with a group of people. Uh, my dear Capricorns, 22nd of December Capricorn season starts and you might feel like your level of confidence, vitality, uh, pride increases with uh, the sun transiting uh, Capricorn. Uh, I'm liking the 22nd of December also when it comes to signing contracts, uh, holding like uh, like a presentation or a talk or, or completing something um, of, a, of an educational nature because it's the day of Mercury Kazemi. 25th of December, really romantic day, also a good day to celebrate together with, um, with friends and you might feel very appreciated and very supported by at least one of your friends. It could be by an entire group. I like the end of the month. It's superb uh, with the full moon in Cancer. 20, 27th of December, active three days before, three days after. Some sort of like a uh, significant success on the relationship front or on the partnership front. And now when I say the relationship, it could be some sort of a significant success uh, when it comes to, to romance, when it comes to romantic relationships. Maybe it feels like a relationship is, is really kind of um, uh, going to the next level and you're seeing some really good results uh, when it comes to the time that you've invested in it. Um, your partner could also have some really good news, maybe connected with uh, their goals for the future, um, maybe also connected with um, their education. You could be celebrating uh, together with, with, uh, with a partner. It does feel like you could also reach some sort of a concrete goal and outcome that you're both very happy with when it comes to the area of children together with your partner. Now, some of you might say, Rux, I'm not in a partnership. That's totally 
totally fine. Uh, this could be a really good day when you're feeling supported, like the full moon in general, the entire energy of the full moon, and uh, that that goes for the three days before and the three days after. Um, the full moon in general might feel like a time when you're very supported by someone, like an advisor, a counselor, a therapist, a consultant, and uh, it could also feel like this is helping you grow as a person, and it's also helping you um, find more joy, find more happiness, find more fulfillment, um, and also maybe um, it's helping you express yourselves better, my dear, uh, my dear Capricorns. Um, you could also hear good news from like a lawyer around this around this time, and whatever it is that you need help with, ask for it because you're probably gonna get it. You're very likely gonna get it. So someone seems to help you solve something that you put a lot of uh, a lot of effort into around this uh, around this time. Twenty eighth of December. I did mention that I don't particularly like this this day because of Mercury conjunct Mars squaring Neptune. Twenty um, ninth of December until the twenty third, Venus goes into your twelfth house. Now this could be a really good time to rest, to travel, um, but especially with the purpose of, of rest and relaxation. Um, to also travel with a romantic partner, um, maybe to also travel with kids if you've got kids. Uh, it does feel like, if anything, it's it's very relaxing and refreshing. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Rex, you don't have kids. So you don't know what traveling with kids it's like. It's it's far from being relaxing and refreshing. Well, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, with Venus um, transiting the twelfth house, the traveling could actually even with kids could be could be quite. Um, like an enjoyable experience. Now, I do know that Mercury is retrograde from the 13th until the 2nd of January. If you do travel throughout this period, maybe it's worth traveling to a place that you've been to, um, that you've been to before, I, I, I wanna, um, I wanna say. I'm also gonna put it out there, um, from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, it could feel like things really slowed down or go back to like an old kind of like issue that you experienced maybe from like a health perspective. Uh, they slow down maybe in terms of progress, but with Venus coming into um, Sagittarius, I do want to say, uh, so from the 29th of December onwards, if you have dealt with anything health-wise in, in the last week of December, you're probably going to get like um, relief because Venus is, is, is probably going to bring relief I'd uh, I'd say and that is Capricorn my dear Aquarius Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings what does December look like for you let's start from the beginning so first and foremost one thing that is probably very important for you to know Aquarians is that Mars is going to be transiting your 11th house of goals for the future and friends and communities the entire month now whilst this might give you quite a bit of motivation <laughs> To go after your goals, it might make you feel very driven and very kind of like um, filled with passion when it comes to your um, your goals and your objectives. On the other hand, there is a higher than usual, maybe, um, potential for quarrels and fights and conflicts and just really um, uh, entering into these sort of like antagonistic situations with friends and really um, you might feel very passionate about defending your beliefs uh, within a group type of setup. Now, this is not a bad thing in any shape or form. I mean, uh, folks who know me in in, uh, in real life uh, know that I'm all for expressing ourselves, expressing and and uh, defending our, our principles and our beliefs. On the other hand, especially around the 28th of December, maybe also the day before the day after, Mercury is going to conjunct Mars and square Neptune. You might say something to a friend that could be really, 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 really hurtful. You might be very quick to jump to a conclusion and uh, you might be quick to kind of like enter into like a verbal like fight or something like that. Or you might be very quick to, to quarrel um, and to defend your position, but you might not actually have all the, um, uh, all the, all the facts, all the data. You might not have all the right numbers <laughs> and you might end up fighting for nothing or or you might end up uh kind of like fighting in in the in the dark so to so to speak so without having the full the full picture also also um if you do voice an opinion in a group environment in a public environment around the 28th of december i would be careful not to jump to conclusions about who uh could 
feel insulted or who could maybe just kind of like agree with you. Um, essentially, there's a possibility that you might hurt your connection with a community, with a group of people, and it might end up impacting in a negative way your finances. So if you're very eager to express your thoughts on something, I would really just slow down around the 20th of, uh, of December and uh, weigh very closely and very carefully what it is that you say to, um, to the world, um, especially what it is that you are sharing about topics connected with your career, um, bosses, authority figures, authority in general, it might backfire. It, it might backfire. I'm going to put it out there. Mercury is also going to be retrograde in the second half of December, pretty much from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. So things could be misinterpreted in general. There is a high chance of miscommunication in general, um, especially miscommunication with friends or in a group type of environment, in a community from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January when Mercury is retrograde. So careful, careful, careful. Uh, sometimes blurting stuff out is not necessarily the right way to go about it. <laughs> this makes me laugh a little bit um, because, um, yeah, it just feels like a lot of people are very keen to express their thoughts, express their opinions, express, express themselves. And hmm, words can cut quite deeply. And sometimes it's maybe smarter and kinder to not cut with words just putting just putting it out there aquarians you you can obviously do whatever you you want it is it is completely completely up to you but uh, that's just my recommendation now since we started talking about mercury retrograde let's also cover that this is one of the most significant transits of the month uh, mercury is going to be retrograde from the 13th uh, of december until the 2nd of january it's going to start the retrograde in your 12th house uh, from the 13th until the 23rd. So uh, there could be um, maybe some some kind of like old ways of thinking, old thought patterns that are quite destructive, maybe coming back to your attention, old worries coming back to your attention, uh, potentially negatively impacting your mental health. I'm going to put it out there. Uh, Sometimes our brain and our logical, rational mind isn't necessarily our best, 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 best friend because it is trying to keep us safe and protected. It is trying to ensure our survival. But that also means it's going to think a lot about the worst case scenario. So if you find yourselves being anxious and thinking about the worst, especially from the 13th until the 23rd of December, just stop for a second and question whether what it is that you're worried about is actually likely to happen or maybe not. Maybe you're just worried about it. Mercury is also the ruler of your fifth house and of your eighth house. Um, there could be some behind the scenes um, conversations happening, especially from the 13th until the 23rd. Um, maybe with old lovers, old romantic partners, they could reach out to you. You could think about them. You could think about reaching out to them. Um, there could also be some things that are happening behind your back throughout this period. So from the 13th until the 23rd, um, maybe connected with your children. Um, maybe they're, they're kind of like keeping something, um, to themselves there. They might be going through a little bit of a hard time. It would not be, it wouldn't be a bad idea at all to maybe just, yeah, to maybe just inquire, to maybe just ask how they're doing, what they're going through, and uh, and so on. Um, because they could be going through something privately, and if you start digging, they might share what what that uh, what that is. Now, from the twenty third of December until the second of of January, Mercury is going to be in retrograde in your eleventh house of groups of people, um, friends, communities. So you could reconnect with friends, you could reconnect with old colleagues, old friends, old communities. Um, you might also feel tempted to go back uh, to maybe kind of like revisit um, creative projects that you were involved in together with a group of people, with a community of people. I mean, Mercury is also the ruler of your house of fun. So you might actually have fun with, with old friends uh, from the, especially from the 23rd until the 2nd of January. But I did flag the 28th and the day before and the day after are not necessarily my favorites when it comes to friends because there can be misunderstandings, I, 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 wanna, I wanna say. Beginning of the month. 
2nd of uh, December, I really like. Um, it does feel like you're getting clarity um, after maybe doing a little bit of introspection and after doing possibly some digging into like information, you're getting clarity when it comes to a financial matter. Uh, 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. Something is happening quite unexpectedly that seems to be uh, interfering with your plans to travel or that seems to be um, impacting in, in, in an unforeseen way. Um, maybe your your academic plans but also maybe your plans um uh, that involved uh, connections with foreign lands and foreign um and foreign countries uh, for those of you who have in-laws um you could find out something about an in-law that is just quite upsetting maybe they're going through a hard time maybe they've been keeping it secret and you could find out about it and you could feel quite sorry for um for them the relationship with an in-law could be uh, put under a little bit of like stress because of like hidden information around this time just as an fyi 4th of December until the 29th of December, Venus transits your 10th house of career. My dear uh, Aquarians, you are probably going to feel like bosses are on your side. Um, you're feeling very appreciated and very admired for your professional success. Um, if you're thinking of, of maybe presenting things in, in public, professionally, uh, I would really take advantage of this entire period. If you're thinking of getting someone on your side who has power and influence, I would also take advantage of this period. And for those of you who are not interested in the career side of things, Venus transiting your 10th house might just make it very it might make it very enjoyable to get out of the house, to spend time in public. It might feel like your reputation and your status is is improving somewhat, or um, it feels like uh, you're getting a lot of like praise and, and admiration in public throughout this period. 5th of December, a really good day to get things done together with someone else in a professional uh, environment to maybe um, agree on, on a collaboration, uh, maybe finalize a project, um, maybe... Um, Finally, kind of like bring things to fruition uh, when it comes to like a long term project of a professional nature. You could also agree on on um, some sort of a, con a contractual clause that seems to put you at an advantage with a boss. Um, this is a day to really ask for what you deserve financially um, because you've put in a lot of time, a lot of energy and a lot of effort in making things work, my dear Aquarius, and you're probably going to get that appreciation. 8th of December and the 18th of December are two of my favorite days this month. Uh, why? Because Mercury is trining Jupiter. So I'm seeing you having like a really good time with family um, at home, really productive conversations with family, really um, uh, enjoyable times with family, I, I want to say. And it feels like you're getting things done at home. Um, and there is like a weight that is being lifted off your shoulders at, um, at home. There's a sense of... of agreeing to maybe work on something for the long term together with family members and there's a sense of like uh, significant positivity and optimism when it comes to uh, home related matters throughout these uh, kind of like um periods so 8th of december and the 18th maybe also the day before and the day uh and the day after um there could be some sort of like pleasant surprise from a family member and maybe it's something of a material nature maybe you receive a gift on either of these days or maybe you decide to surprise someone in any case, I really, really, really like these days. Uh, you might also feel very inspired by the conversations with family members throughout these uh, periods, and they might inspire you to think to think about the future from from like a different angle, from like a different perspective. It, it might feel like conversations with family members really broaden your horizons and and inspire you. Twelfth of December also active. Three days before, three days after, there's a new one in your 11th house. So new beginnings in terms of goals for the future, um, objectives, uh, maybe also a new beginning when it comes to your uh, belonging to a community or a group of people. Maybe you're deciding to join an organization, uh, maybe an organization that is likely to have a positive impact upon your um well, I'm going to say upon your um, home situation, maybe you're deciding to to join like a community of, of parents, for instance. This is just an example. Remember, astrology is only symbolically and archetypally predictive. It doesn't predict concrete manifestation. 
So you might join a community of people that somehow supports you uh, when it comes to, to your home life, your family life. Um, you might also feel like uh, the relationship with a friend is entering like a new stage or like a friend could have some sort of big news for you. Uh, maybe they're, they're sharing the fact that uh, they're going to start a family or they're moving. It feels bittersweet in a way. It feels like it's, it's good news, but on the other hand, you might feel also a little bit sorry for yourselves. If you're starting to collaborate with a new group of people around this time, and if there's like money involved, I would read the fine print and I would go uh, through the fine print, the fine print with like a fine tooth comb. Uh, just because there could be details that you miss or there could be aspects of the um, of the collaboration that you are not really fully, 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 fully aware of. And if, if something seems too good to be true, I would question it and I would be quite skeptical about it because Neptune can bring this kind of like energy of glamour in the mix. And once you kind of like start digging into it, you realize, oh no, this is not exactly what I thought or what I had in uh, in mind. That's not as good as what I had in uh, in mind, I'd, uh, I'd say. <clears throat> 21st of December, Venus opposes Uranus. I feel like something's happening at home that is not allowing you to fully, fully maybe enjoy um, your success in the professional uh, sense. Maybe something's happening at home that is taking you away from um, maybe like a public event or that's taking you away from your um, from your work. It also feels like there's, there's some sort of a break um, maybe... Um, within the family, two family members are not really getting along and it feels like there's a crack in their relationship on this day. 22nd of December, uh, Capricorn season starts. Capricorn season for you, my dear Aquarius, especially Aquarius Risings, activates your 12th house. So it's a very good time for the next month from the 22nd of December onwards to focus on your mental health, to focus on rest, to focus on introspection, and also on what it is that you need to release out of your life. And you could have a lot of clarity as to what needs to go out of your life. Maybe some sort of a of an unhealthy habit, for example, around the 22nd of December when, Mer when Mercury is going to be conjunct the sun. So there's kind of like an enhanced mental clarity. Mercury is going to be Cassini. 25th of December, really romantic day, but also a really good day to uh, feel like you're attracting money, praise, uh, success, and appreciation. And you could actually have some really good um, news and, 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 and a sense of like, feeling lucky but it's not luck it's 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 just kind of like finally your your efforts paying off um feeling lucky when it comes to where your career is headed my dear aquarius 27th of december active three days before three days after there's a full moon activating your axis of work and service so you could be finalizing um a work-related project you could also be finalizing a job and saying goodbye to a job if that is the case if that is happening it's probably because you've got something much more exciting that you're you're um looking forward to maybe you're finalizing a job um and and maybe saying goodbye to a job because you want to focus more on your family maybe you're preparing to like have a child uh, maybe you're moving and you're leaving a job behind uh, there's also a sense of of success at work i want to say and you could feel like okay i deserve to celebrate together with my family and focus on my family because uh, uh work has has uh, played out really really nicely there's also a sense of getting some sort of a result, a positive result on the on the health front. It could be for you or it could be for a family member. In any case, it feels like a, a weight is lifted off your off your chest. And 29th of December until the last week of January, until the 23rd of January, Venus transits your 11th house. So this is actually a really good time to, to celebrate together with friends. And if you have been having some, some fights, some quarrels, arguments with friends, uh, or if you feel like you're... you're um, your membership within a community has suffered uh, this month, Venus comes in and smooths things over. So it is likely to help you improve relationships with, with friends or with a community and also attract uh, maybe um, a sense of enjoyment when it comes to friendship and community in general, my dear Aquarians. That is December for you. My dear Pisces, Pisces suns and Pisces risings, what does the last month of 2023 look like for you? Mars, planet of action, energy, assertiveness, passion is going to be in your house of career the entire month. You're probably going to be very energized by your professional goals and 
really feeling like you just want to go, 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 go for it. You seem to be very motivated and driven by money because Mars is also the ruler of your house of, um, your house of income. You also seem to be very motivated to, um, defend your, um, beliefs and your principles. And there could also be quite a bit of action in terms of maybe, uh, making plans to travel for, for career purposes, for professional purposes, just feeling very kind of like energized by this, um, combination of professional life and um, traveling or, or um, involvement with maybe um, colleagues, co-workers from, from different offices, for, for instance, maybe from different countries, for, um, for example, I would be quite um, aware of the fact that you might come across in the public sphere, especially in the professional um, sphere, but in general, in the public sphere, you might come across as being quite pushy and domineering. And there's always a place for that. I mean, I am one who totally uh, believes in, in, in um, fighting for what we, what we stand for and, and asserting ourselves and not being a doormat. But especially around the 28th of December, maybe also the day before the day after, uh, you might get into a fight, a conflict with someone in a position of power. Um, you might enter into some sort of like heated argument with maybe uh, an authority figure or even a parent, and it could end up feeling quite hurtful. It could end up feeling quite disappointing also, and it might even feel like it is hurting, uh, it is hurting your your status and your reputation in some, um, in some shape or form, my dear, uh, my dear Pisces. So if you ask me, if you ask me, I would be careful what I say, um, in public, um, especially around the 20th of December, uh, the day before and the day after. Generally, I would be very careful what I say in public, what I say to bosses, what I say in the, um, in the public world. Also, when Mercury is retrograde, Mercury is going to be retrograde from the 13th of December until the 2nd of January. It's going to uh, start the retrograde in your 11th house of friends, communities, and groups of people. So there is a chance of misunderstandings with um, with your friends or, or within a community type of environment from the 13th until the 23rd. And from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, there is a high chance of, of maybe uh, getting into a pickle and and misunderstandings and things being lost in translation in the professional sphere, but also in the relationship that you've got with a boss, with an authority figure, or with a parent, particularly the mother, I, I want to I wanna say. It might feel like you have to go backwards a little bit and maybe take care of old projects, old issues, old aspects that you've worked on um, from the professional side of things, um, in particular from the 23rd of December until the 2nd of January, and your progress career-wise might feel like it's slowed down throughout this period, there might also be a sense of, of maybe questioning some of the choices that you've made professionally from the last week of December until the 2nd of January. I wouldn't be very quick to act on them, however. It's a good time to reevaluate things. It's a good time to take stock, to do a post-mortem, as they say, when Mercury is retrograde. But I wouldn't be very... Um, let's say quick to decide, okay, yeah, I need to like give up on this job or I need to give up on this industry or I need to kind of like make this, this, uh, quick decision. The thing is Mars might be, might be kind of like lighting a fire underneath you and making you feel like you got to act now when it comes to your career, but sometimes acting in the, in the heat of the moment. So, so, uh, impulsively, um, it might be based off of, uh, incorrect information or incomplete information or your, your, your opinion and your position could actually just change after the Mercury retrograde is over. So I do, I do want to put it, I do want to put this, um, this out there. There is a possibility that you might collaborate with like an old, uh, maybe collaborator, partner, uh, advisor, um, especially in the professional sense. Um, there, there could be an opportunity coming up uh, to collaborate with um, someone like that from the last week of December until the 2nd of January. It could be worth considering, but but maybe not rushing into it just, just because it might be worth waiting until the beginning of January anyway. Um, unless you are in a leadership position, I'm just going to put it out there, Pisces. Um, and even then, um, we all got to like... I don't know. We all have a line manager in some shape or in some shape or form. We 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 all have to report to someone higher up. Um, 
but but especially if you're if you're not in a leadership position, I'd say this Mars in the tenth house can can be very frustrating because you might be very very annoyed with someone in a position of power. If you are in a leadership position, uh, Pisces, uh, then you might just feel very driven and motivated career wise to to kind of like to to get things off the ground. But with Mercury retrograde. And as I said, Mercury is going to be retrograde in your 10th house of career from the last week of December until the 2nd of January. I strongly advise against rushing. I mean, you know you have free will. You can do whatever whatever feels best for you. But just saying you might not have all the data. You might not have all the facts. And you might even just change your mind a little bit later. So don't say I didn't warn you. Now, beginning of the month. Let's go back to the beginning of the month. Um... 2nd of December, Mercury sextile Saturn, really productive day uh, to get things done in, in, in a group type of environment, to maybe accomplish something, to achieve something, um, together with a group of people, maybe together with your community, with your peers, with your, um, with your friends, uh, possibly. <clears throat> it's also a very good day to present something that you've worked really hard for, to, to kind of like to speak in front of an audience, to present something um, in, in front of an audience, something that you've worked really, really long and hard for because it's probably going to land very well. 3rd of December, Venus squares Pluto. Um, I'm thinking there could be some challenging information that comes to your attention uh, connected with either a partner or a friend. And this challenging information could um, result in, in um, your relationship with this person entering into a little bit of a crisis, a crisis of trust, or maybe also a crisis connected with uh, some skewed power dynamics. Secrets might come to the surface and you might not be very pleased when it comes to... Yeah, <laughs> being confronted with, uh, with them. Venus is going to go in your ninth house from the 4th of December until the 29th. Uh, this is a really enjoyable time to travel. It is also a very enjoyable time when it comes to um, participating in cultural events, such as going to the theater, going to the museum. Um, you're very uh, supported, I want to say, um, when it comes to maybe investing some money, some resources in education, uh, possibly also in, in traveling. I'd, 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 uh, I'd put it out there. And it is actually a good time from the 4th until the 29th to make plans to travel together with someone else or even to physically travel. Now, remember, if you are physically traveling with Mercury retrograde, second half of the month from the 13th onwards, I would double check that uh, you've got the right, I don't know, um, booking, uh, that uh, um, you, you, you have your passport with you, that you've got travel insurance, just to be on the safe side, just to be on the safe side. I'm not saying that anything uh, will happen, but... With Mercury retrograde, uh, we know that transportation, commerce generally is, is uh, so these areas are likely to, to be impacted, I'd, I'd say. 8th of December and the 18th are two of my favorite days. Mercury trines Jupiter. Very, very beneficial, inspirational, inspiring, positive conversations um, with friends, colleagues, um, siblings, um, you really seem to, to kind of like to, to be experiencing like a broadening of your vision and of your horizons. Also, when it comes to your goals for the future, you seem to be benefiting from the help of either friends or colleagues or siblings when it comes to fulfilling your goals for the, for the future. Your mind is, is very kind of like open to, um, integrating new information and, and, and new perspectives, I'd, um, I'd say. You might also benefit from, from any sort of like uh, connections that you have with foreigners on these days, 8th of December and the uh, 18th of December. And for you, Jupiter also rules your house of career. So these are some really good days to take advantage um, of them career-wise, to have important conversations such as interviews, um, to network, to reach out to a client, to present, to make a big kind of like presentation. I like it. Now, the 18th of December, this is when Mercury is retrograde. So I would recommend making a big presentation or having like a big conversation with your boss, for instance, only if it was pre-planned. So only if it's not a new thing, only if it has been on your on your kind of like radar or agenda or calendar for quite some time. I wouldn't necessarily do something new, I'd, I'd say. Uh, the 18th of December is also a fantastic, fantastic uh, time to get back together with friends, to reconnect with friends, to reconnect with old colleagues. You might benefit from it tremendously. You... Uh, you might even be surprised to find that um, they've got some new opportunities for you from a professional perspective. So I'm really, really, really liking this. 
new one in your house of career, my dear uh, Sagittarius, my, my dear Pisces. So the new one is happening in Sagittarius on the 12th of December. Uh, active also three days before, three days after uh, Pisces. Um, new beginning professionally. Maybe maybe it's the beginning of a new chapter. Maybe you're stepping up professionally. Maybe you're stepping into a new industry. Maybe you're just kind of like looking at your career sector from a different standpoint. You're eager to maybe learn something new. You're eager to work with new people. Um, you might start the collaboration with, with a new community, a new set of colleagues, a new team. It does feel like you're stepping into something that is, that is very exciting and educational and... Um, enhancing from like a from like a a meaning and and, and a life philosophy perspective i i i want to say around this time my dear pisces you could also you could also uh start working with maybe like a team of people that is that is uh based abroad so i do see the sense of like collaborating with um with maybe like a new uh, a new set of uh, a new set of people the one thing about this new moon is that it is con well it is in a a bit of a tense aspect with Neptune. I would, if you say yes to a new job, a new role, a new position, a new collaboration professionally, I would make sure that you know what is expected of you because both the Sagittarian energy as well as the Piscean and the Neptunian uh, energy, they're not very big on the details. They're not uh, very big on, on reading the fine print. They're not very big on, on kind of like getting the specifics out of a situation. So I wouldn't want you to be um, taken by surprise when you actually start the new job or when you actually start the new uh, position. I wouldn't want you to be surprised and to say, oh, this is not what I was expecting. Um, I would also be very careful uh, not to... Uh, overpromise uh, to a boss or not to overpromise if you sign up for a new job around this time because um, it might just make you further down the line look like a downright liar I I wanna um, I want to say so that's just something that I wanted to put on your uh, on your radar. 21st of December Venus opposes Uranus um, there could be some some sort of like sudden change in plans to travel. Uh, there could be some sort of disruption on the road or a disruption with planes or something like that. Uh, so I would have a little bit of a backup plan if possible. And I wouldn't be overly attached to plans um, that are revolving around travel on this particular day. Uh, then 22nd of December, um, we've got the beginning of... We've got the sun entering Capricorn and the beginning of Capricorn season and the Mercury Cosimi in the sky fabulous day for clarity and and generally the entire Capricorn season so from the 22nd uh, of December for the next month um, the, the spotlight is placed on your goals for the future in particular on the 22nd you seem to have tremendous 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 clarity on what you want your future to look like my dear Pisces um, it could feel like you've also got very important conversations with family members maybe with your partner around the future and it just feels like it's it's kind of like this aha moment this this moment of like enlightenment in terms of your view and your vision for the future it's also a good day to maybe have concrete conversations about um collaborations especially in the professional sense around this uh, around this time my dear pisces 25th of december venus trines neptune oh gosh you feel loved and appreciated and you seem to really experience a sense of relaxation around around the future and around the meaning of life and you seem to feel much more loving towards your own journey so far in life my dear Pisces now it's also likely to be a very enjoyable and pleasant and relaxing day overall um, especially if you're traveling you might be very um, very kind of like um, excited about it you might feel like you've, you're also having potentially some sort of like spiritual epiphanies and aha moments if you are traveling and not even just then you might feel like you've got some aha moments um, if you're connecting with someone that feels like a teacher of some sorts or like a guide of some sorts you seem to be very inspired by something that you really resonate with on a on either like a spiritual or on a philosophical level 27th of december the full moon in cancer oh this looks beautiful this looks beautiful i love it i love this new moon my apologies this full moon <laughs> I, I i almost feel as as excited as i would normally feel for like a new moon because it's like yes new beginning but this is a full moon it's a time of of culminations of of seeing the outcome of seeing results um it's a time, if you ask me, 
my dear Pisces, when you're probably celebrating. You're celebrating, you're having a good time, you might be partying, uh, you might be really enjoying yourselves with friends, with family members, siblings, colleagues, and it almost feels like it's it's a time when you, um, when you feel very good about yourselves, Pisces, and about celebrating life because you've worked very hard. It feels like you have earned this. You might feel like you've accomplished a very significant goal, I, uh, I want to say, on a personal level. Uh, maybe it's something connected with children. Maybe it's something connected with your health, with your appearance, with your self-development. But it really feels like you're very... You're very happy with how things have turned out. Um, you are giving yourselves permission to relax. You're giving yourselves permission to, to be gentle with yourselves and to take care of yourselves and to really tend to your needs and to share your success maybe with the world in some shape or form. Now, some of you could hear news of pregnancy, just putting it out there. I am, I, I do want to make you aware of it, especially Pisces risings. Now, um, it could be pregnancy on a personal level, but it, there could also be news of pregnancy or positive news connected with children within the family in general. 29th of December until the 23rd of January, generally a very auspicious time from, from like a career perspective. You know, I told you that you're, you, you, you might have been in a conflictual mood, domineering um, mood um, for most of December. Well, it looks like you're kind of like mellowing and it feels like you can repair or, or you can even improve and, and build uh, relationships in the professional, um, in the professional sphere, I, I, I want to say. Um, you seem to be benefiting from like a status and reputation perspective from the 29th of December until the 23rd of January. And you really seem to be enjoying the spotlight throughout this period. So if you do have the opportunity to go out into the world, to be in the spotlight, it doesn't just have to be career wise. It can be in general in your life to speak in front of an audience. I would go ahead and do it because it's probably going to feel very, 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 very fulfilling. And that is Pisces. Folks, I do want to thank you once again for tuning in and for um, joining me for, for your um, December 2023 horoscope. Please let us know in the comments how December plays out for you. Remember that if you um, if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website. My website is writteninthestars-astrology.com. You can go straight to the services section to purchase a, a consultation with me. First time clients can go straight for the one hour, 15 minutes Zoom consultation. Existing clients can also uh, go for the 30 minutes follow up or for the year ahead forecast, which I imagine uh, might might be of, of very significant, uh, of tremendous interest uh, since we are at the, uh, on the cusp of a new, um, of a new year. Remember that I'm also on Instagram. You can find me at Rux Unbelievable. That is in one word, Rux Unbelievable. And I only have one Instagram account, so I'm never gonna message you asking you for donations or like stuff like that. And if you kind of like uh, receive a random follow from someone that looks like, like me in terms of account, it's probably not me, it's probably a scammer, so please unfollow, block, report. Um, last but not least, if my work is of use to you, if you find it useful, if you find it helpful, don't be afraid to leave a donation, uh, don't be afraid to hit that thanks button underneath the video. Um, what goes around comes around. So you putting this energy out into the world um, is is very likely going to come back to you in a different uh, in a different form. Enjoy December, folks, and I will see you next time. Bye.